YouTube, hello. Let's get right to it. Wrecking my voice for... <laughs> just to get it back for me to play AI Somnium Files, which is a visual novel horror game. Hey, maybe that one's voice acted. Maybe I'll get a pass on that one. Ahem. Hey, Nick. What is it this time? You won't believe how many people are here for the trial. Oh, God. You can tell... You can tell my voice is a little shot. Well, it is a murder case. What are you talking about? They're here for the trial next door. Next door? Why don't you know? Why don't you know this, Nick? Ah, they're having defense or Detective Atme's trial today. Oh, so fucking Detective Atme's trial. You know, we were doing a Mask the Mask trial yesterday. Where were all these people during that, huh? Detective Atme? They say they're going to try him as mask to mask. Yeah, where were these people yesterday? What the hell? Somnium Files is voice acted, thank goodness. Already? That was fast. Boy, I'd love to see mask to mask's trial. We were there! Yesterday! I know. By the way, where's Pearls? Oh, she went back home. She said she can't neglect her training anymore. I know you don't like me. Is this Gumshoe? Delight? Edgeworth? <laughs> Pearls has really gotten into her tra Larry Butts, maybe? Pearls has really gotten to her training lately, huh? Yeah, ever since that incident last year. It's definitely Ron. God, uh, how could I possibly... <clears throat> Please, don't ignore me! Oh, Mr. Delight, good morning. No one likes me. No one would notice me even if I killed someone. Maybe don't say that at a murder trial, buddy. Just a thought. Come on, don't be silly. Wait, wait a second. You don't mean you're the murderer. N -n 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 no, I'm just a poor thief. No, wait, that's not right. A thief can't really be poor. They totally can. What do you mean? This fucking guy. I think we'll finish case two today. I don't know. How long is it? Uh, uh, personal question, sorry. Uh, how long do you think this case is? Because we're already... Th this is the second trial in the second case. So, you know. Kind of going for a wild ride here. I would like to. Now, let's see. According to Mr. Delight, from his second crime on, he was following a bunch of set plans. Plans that someone had been sending him to help him commit the heists. Yeah, my theory is that Kane Bouard, uh was rigging the thing or rigging the the security so that mask to mask could slip right in and steal shit which he could then which he would then deliver to him via a safe deposit box uh and ron got a cut for his trouble is my thought i don't know why that would lead to the murder of him or anything but that's my theory on what's going on do you really think there's a connection between the thief and the murder nick not the scary game was today? No, yes, silly. That's Thursday, Friday. Or Princess Leia's hairstyle. Looks like cinnamon buns. It is cinnamon buns. I, I do see cinnamon buns every time. Leia's got the buns up on, like, the top of the head back here. Ron's are, like, on the side, almost like earmuffs. It's a minor distinction, but it's there. It's possible. Today's trial is a race against the clock. Huh? How come? Let's just take our time like always. I'm afraid that's not an option. Eh? 10 a.m., all right. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The fence is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Ahem. <laughs> Go dot, shut the fuck. What do you mean? <laughs> shut up with your poorly drawn chin strap there. Ahem. You're ready? Preparation is the last refuge of the week. Okay, settle down, everyone. Let's begin with the opening statement, Mr. Godot. Ugh, he's got the judge in his palm of his hand, yet again. Rondelite is simply too young to be sent to war. That's all. What? You like Final Fantasy XII? That is a decisive one. I'm afraid I have no idea what that means, Mr. Godot. I like the judge in this game. Then you need to get out more, Your 
honor. No, I think you're just a fucking weirdo, Godot. You say unhinged shit and are like, if you don't get it, then it's fucking your problem. I'm out here spitting truths. And it's like, no, you're just an idiot. Balthier is hot, though. Uh, you misspelled Fran, but okay. Life is war, but that is exactly why you must be more precise in your wording. That's all my statement means. You understand now, right? No! No, I don't! Yes, well, let me briefly summarize the details of the case. Wow, the judge is taking charge like he knows what's going on for a change. The victim is Kane Boulard, CEO of KB Security. Blech. His body was found in his safe at approximately 9 a.m. on the morning of the 13th. However, the time of death is estimated to be as 1 a.m. on the previous day. And that's where a little lost kitten dropped the ball. That little lost kitten is, of course, the defendant. Very well then, Mr. Godot. Please call your first witness. I never drink more than 17 cups of coffee during any given trial. Dude, you must gotta pee like a racehorse every time. I made this point last time. That is way too much caffeine, dude. But the first one is always the best. Ah, uh, Mr. Godot, your witness. Please. Okay, then. Let's hear what the defendant, Mr. Rondelite, has to say for himself. The defendant? Well, Mr. Wright, does the defense have any objections? It's weird laws in Phoenix Wright world where the prosecution can call pretty much whoever they want to the witness stand except the defendant, at which point they need the defense attorney's permission to do that. Uh, who, in my opinion, is the Mount Rushmore of voice acting? As in, like, the untouched pinnacle? Mel Blanc leaps to mind. 17 cups is far too many to be healthy. Oh, yeah. It may be a bit of a disadvantage having the defendant testify, but... I remember when Mia was defending me, she allowed me to testify so she could do the cross-examination. She put a lot of trust in me back then. We have no objections, Your Honor. The defense will allow Mr. Delight to testify. Ha! You've got guts, trite. All right then, Mr. Ron Delight, please take the stand. You did it, didn't you? Well, he's to the point. <laughs> yeah, yes. What? Uh, no, 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 no. That's not true. Okay, that was about to be real short. <laughs> You're your loan fall? Well, that's not Mel Blank, so I'm going to stick with Mel Blank. He's literally called the man of a hundred voices. He did, not an exaggeration, all the Looney Tunes. So, hmm, for a moment there, I thought we'd set a record for the shortest trial ever. Ah, <sighs> well, Mr. Delight already looks plenty guilty with the face he's making. And once he opens his big mouth, he'll probably nail his own coffin. Ha! Very well. Now then, can you tell me something? If you didn't kill Boulard, why did you go to KB Security? Well, I... That's kind of hard to say. Boy, I wish I could go home. Now then, let's hear some testimony about what happened. Mel Rushmore has four heads. Oh. Uh, uh, Mel Blank. Pardon me, wants to say Mel Blank Jr. to be an asshole. Uh, didn't Jim Henson do most of the Muppets? Put him. Well, nah, Frank Oz did a bunch of them. Uh, I don't know. Mel Blank. Some other people. Who cares? Uh, Steve Blum. Matt Mercer and Yuri Lowenthal. Why not? Sure. Uh, Troy Baker as well. Sneak him in there. A secret fifth head. That evening around 1 a.m. I went to Mr. Boulard in his office at KB Security. The blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. I'd been working for KB Security until a year ago, so I knew where his office was. Sam Rigel? Nah, I'm good. 1 a.m. The exact time the murder took place. The weak get washed away, but the tides of fate, the, by the tides of fate, the strong drink it up. 
No one's drinking Tides. What do you mean? Well, okay. Bad, bad example. If it comes in pod form. <laughs> it's bitter today, too. Just like my destiny. Shut the fuck up. You melodramatic robot man. You masked son of a bitch. You'd never know that from the way he's chugging it down. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you please. Jesus. My visit to KB Scarada. Alright. What I am going to the bit food of Whoops. There we go. One of those buttons. Saw a big cat in your garden, it was kinda cute. Ma, there's a fucking weird cat out here! What I am, huh? You absolutely sure about that? Yes. That's what my watch said when I was entering the CEO's office. Er, no. Actually, I'm not really sure. My watch was slow, and my internal clock was also a bit... 1 a.m. That's the exact time the victim, Mr. Bouard, was murdered, correct? It's too late for a coffee date, that's for sure. <laughs> really? You have a, you have a time cut off for coffee? Surprises me. Aw, oh, Noki's here. On the day when my voice is kind of shot and I can't do the voices so well. Hooray! It ordered you there? It was the first time I'd gotten a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Does that mean you've gotten other blackmail letters then? Oh, of course. Who hasn't? They'd say things like, steal this, or... Ah, why don't we say that for later, Mr. Delight? Please don't say any more! Ahem. Now, what should I do? Boy, uh, we'll save that for later, but also, press harder. So what did the blackmail letter in question say? It said bring $50,000. Uh, our pet crows aloud. In this game? To testify as witnesses? Yeah, probably. In real life? Yeah, also probably. I don't see why not. Money, eh? A perfect motive for committing murder. Oh, but wait. Wait! I never intended to pay the money anyway. Then why did you go? Oh, is that right? After all, it had, he had nothing to hold over my head. I had nothing to be afraid of. Well, the fact that you went there, he's dead, and you never intended to pay him, really don't look good for you, Ron. Hmm, an important point indeed. If he hadn't, excuse me, if he had nothing on you, why didn't you just ignore it? I love crows, we have a lot of them, they look cool. Witness! Let's have the uh, let's have that added to the your testimony. Yes, sir. Ha. Huh. A muddy mud skipper in outer space is a better chance of surviving than I do. Okay. Fucking sure, Phoenix. Don't know what that is supposed to mean. My mouth threat didn't scare me. Uh, it wasn't going to cause trouble or anything. My phone area ordered me to go there. I mean, he had to add that, so that's probably the uh, the statement to throw evidence at. Just what were you being blackmailed about, anyway? The blackmail letter said, if you don't want your identity revealed, correct? I'm sure it was referring to the whole mask to mask thing. But I wasn't worried. Mr. Blard didn't have anything on me. He didn't? Anyway, I don't care what anyone says about me. Just as long as Desi believes in me. So that's why Mr. Light didn't believe he was mask to mask. That's why I knew they were just hollow threats. Then why did you go? It looks so bad that you went. You used to be a security chief for KB Security, right? Yes, that's right. A security chief? You? But you're so twinkish. And yet, a year ago, you were fired without notice. Revenge for an old grudge? A perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? Would you? Stop! This is just speculation, Godot, please. Hmm. This isn't good. Maybe I should change the subject. Or you could object. Life after being fired, why he was fired. Uh, why were we fired? Crows do not make good pets. No, they are large and smelly, like many birds would be. Even if legal, uh, it's probably you shouldn't have one. No, the, uh, they do look cool. I'll give them that. The, uh, Game of Thrones helped with that, having the crows that yelled and could mimic English. But, uh, nah, crows are greedy, large, and smelly. All birds are smelly, but... 
Large ones are particularly kind of bullies. Mr. Delight, please tell us why you're fired from your job. Well... The world is filled with those who have said, I wish I had never asked that. Oh, okay, then I take it back. Defend it! Please answer the question! I, well, I needed money. Surely that's why you would get a job. You needed money. Um, well, you see, as he loves to spend it, it's kind of her hobby. Not exactly the best hobby in the world, huh, Nick? All right, burger eater, calm down. That was a slur, by the way, burger eater. My salary wasn't nearly enough, so I stole data from the company. Ooh. Well, let's uh, come again. Keep a security has a lot of security in all sorts of companies. And since I was security team chief, you stole some data and sold it. Mr. Bard found out and I was fired immediately. What? <laughs> I wish I had never asked that. I was somehow able to keep it a secret. It made it seem like I had quit on my own. Yeah, he, you really should have been sued, if I'm being honest with you. What is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to their company is fired as punishment. You do well to remember that. I'm my own boss! What do you mean? <laughs> he sure told you. So you admit you stole data from your company, is that correct? Y yes, I'm sorry. This is a very important fact. Please add it to your testimony. Aw oh, man, this whole thing just took a big turn for worse, crashed and blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to rip this case from the clutches of disaster. That is unfortunate. Nathan! And also smart, so it's likely, uh, it's almost like keeping a small child with the ability to fly. Well, it's not like, the child would get smarter and the crow wouldn't. But yeah, crows are wicked smart. So, it would, uh, it's a smelly, greedy bully that is sneaky as well. Used to be, I'll ask him the other thing. Rose and Ravens actually mimic human speech. At least Ravens definitely can. Uh, better than parrots. Indeed. So can uh, Mockingjays, I believe. Oh, wait. Didn't... Uh... Oh, did I just mash through that? Without asking him the other thing? Used to work for it. Yes. Security chief. Oh, no. I could only ask... They didn't let me ask the other question. Ah, well. You're naming it Adachi. Why? Name it Yadagrasu. Why would you do something like that? Well, for Desi's hobby, what else? Wasting money, huh? <laughs> it's not a waste! So Miss Delight doesn't know her husband was fired, does she? Well, she probably does now if she's watching the damn trial. So it would seem. I'm not sure what to think about couples keep secrets like that from each other. I can't believe it. This case has even gotten my to think seriously about couples. Please try to stay focused, Mr. Wright. There wasn't much to his testimony, was there? Sounds like he's avoiding something. At least that's what it sounds like to me. Uh-oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. You better be careful. But if we don't find a way to make him spill the beans, we'll never get closer to the truth. Yeah. All right. Give me security. Or me go there. <coughs> wasn't cause me trouble or anything. Working so I knew where his office was. He fired me for selling company secrets, but this area doesn't know about that. All right, so the statements that were added were this one, and yeah, it didn't scare you. So I need to work on disproving that, or the other one. Which would mean either Desi knew he was fired, or it did scare him. Which I would, they somehow haven't asked him, if you didn't go there with money, then why did you go there? Which would be bad, because the obvious answer would be, to kill him! Uh, Night of Crime, Auto Storm. What does this say? I'm not sure I didn't reveal to the world. If you don't, I'll take that red diamond you received the other day instead. Oh! Wait, what? 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 What diamond? I'm talking about Mocking Jays? Being able to mimic human speech? I mean, they're literally called Mocking Jays for that reason, but. I get smarter, but the crow would be like having a permanent toddler with the ability to fly. Wow, Nokia's opinions on this. 
That's why I, also why parrots are not good pets either. You need serious containment as you basically be having a toddler with wings and scissors for a face for like 80 years. A lot of bird owners get their bird's wings clipped so they don't have the ability to fly for the exact reason you're referring to. The morality and uh, ethics of doing that are questionable at best, but that is a thing that happens and is not uncommon, at least in the U.S. No idea about other parts of the world. Uh, the red gem? What is it? Red diamond he received the other day. That might be worth looking into. Black Mouth Threat didn't scare me. It wasn't going to cause me any trouble. First heist, that thing. Right, buzzer went off. He was stealing his directed by blackmail letters. That has nothing to do with anything. Uh, at the moment. Um, I, part of me thinks it should be this, because he specifically said he didn't, like, bring any money. Uh... But, like, then I pressed it. If I, I want to present this to it, if only so they ask, why the hell did you go then? And could you tell us about this red uh, diamond? Oh, wait. This is new. Oh, it's one of those I had to press twice. God damn it. Ugh. The victim had no proof the defendant was mask to mask. But you were the one who stole company secrets one year earlier. But, but that was all over with once I was fired. I hate when they do that. But it is true, the fact I stole secrets was kept under wraps. Even so, there was no reason for me to pay up now, a whole year later. Hmm, is that really true? What is it, Nick? The fact that Ron was stealing company data. I wonder if he would have had a problem if that ever became public knowledge. Mm, doesn't doesn't he believe Desi hates thieves? So yeah, he would not want that being public knowledge. Mr. Delight, I believe you would have been in considerable trouble if your identity as a company data thief were as made public. Eh. Mr. Wright, what are you trying to do by bullying your own client? Your Honor, look at him. He's so bullyable. Well, I suppose yes, he is. Carry on then. Ha! Men are like colonies of bacteria. True! The more heat you apply, the faster they grow. What? That That's exactly right! What? Well then, feel free to keep up the heat, my little lawyer amigo. Little lawyer amigo? Yes, now come on. Provide some evidence to back up your assertion. Why would Mr. Delight want to keep his data stealing secret from going public? I mean... Desi? Hates criminals and cowards more than anything. The fact that it specifically says that means this better be the answer. Thank you. Mr. Delight, what you said just now doesn't match what you told me yesterday. Huh? What doesn't? I think you must have been scared, very scared, of having a certain person find out your secret. Yep. A certain person? Miss is Desiree Delight, the defendant's wife. Why does it not say Mrs.? Why, but I... Listen to me, my Desi, she's... Checking two things, Mockingjay is a fictional bird from Hunger Games. Oh, well, there are mocking birds then, excuse me. Mockingbird in your hands, a real bird capable. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I was in Slate's chat the other day talking about Hunger Games with her, or er, him. Uh, so yeah, Mocking Jay was on my brain. Mocking Bird is what I meant to say. Slate, fun fact, a uh, big fan of Hunger Games. Which, I didn't think there were big fans of Hunger Games, but there he is. Ahem. <clears throat> Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end before it truly begins. Grr, Godot! Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. What do you mean? Mr. Delight stole company data to pay his wife's spending habit, for which he was fired. Unable to face his own wife, someone used his dirty little secret to blackmail him. Blech. Just the tongue out, the no pupils. Blech. I hate that death photo. As opposed to all those death photos I love. And that's how this murder came about. Oh. Hmm. 
No! Everything's falling neatly into place for him. Don't talk about my Desi like that. Or you'll be sorry! Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Nick? I didn't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whipped in just 20 minutes. You probably shouldn't have approved your guy getting on the stand then, Nick, if that's what was going to happen. Clearly, there was sufficient motive for murder. He stole data for his wife. He killed to protect his secret. A family man who cared just a little too much. Not guilty. Oh, shit. Ah, the judge's heart. So exploitable. The motive is clear. Let's move on. Erg. What happened at the crime scene at one in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come on now. Tell us. We're all ears. At the CEO's office. Hey, 7-9, what's up? When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. Again, who could it possibly be? My money's on Edgeworth. Suddenly, I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. Come on, you said in your testimony if I hadn't been wearing that. You want to throw a fucking noun our way instead of a pronoun? When I came to, Mr. Bullard was lying there, dead. So if your interviews uh, and pro-react videos to lawyers and they all say that taking a stand is seldomly a good idea. Yeah. I see. Suddenly hit on the forehead. Hmm? I believe the detective from yesterday provided similar testimony. At the moment, irrelevant, Your Honor. He said that mask to mask struck him on the head from behind. Of course, since Atley turned out to be the culprit himself. That was all a lie. Ha! Huh. No one's going to be believe a pathetic lie like that. What are you saying? I really was attacked! We'll find out if what you say is true or not during cross-examination. Right? Find out if what he says is true or not. No! Got that, Mr. Trite. Don't go easy just because he's your client. If I see any sign you are, I'll treat you to another cup of my special blend. Oh no, you're gonna throw more hot coffee at me and assault me further, whatever will I do. It's not like I have been through something incredibly similar in the previous game or expect you to keep doing that throughout this game. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Godot. I have faith in Ron. I just know he didn't do it. Under the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. Who was this masked man? If there were a thousand of me, and if even one knew, I'd tell you. Trust me. Just say I don't know. He's dodging all of our questions. Is not helping us win this case. Okay, then how about the victim? Mr. Bo was Mr. Boulard there at the time? What do you mean by how was he? That's basically what I asked, yeah. Was he already dead? Was he still alive? Maybe he was the one who hit you in the first place. That's a good question. What do you think, Mr. Wright? I don't know. <laughs> Forget it. Suddenly I was hit in the forehead after that I remember being a bit dazed. Your forehead? Yes, I was hit on the forehead as soon as I entered the room. It was an amazingly fast and powerful attack. Do you remember anything about who hit you? Well, like I said, it was a fast and powerful hit. So I think it was a I was a little dazed for a while. I don't think Mr. Delight even grasps what you're talk what you were asking. Yeah, I'd like to show him a fast and powerful attack myself. Maybe that would knock some sense back into him. Okay, a little little violent towards your client there, right? But sure, like the energy, I guess. That. Could you please clarify what you're referring to? Why, my Mask to Mask costume, of course. But wait just a moment! Mask to Mask? Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? Just to be on the safe side, I dressed as Mask to Mask. <laughs> I do... I do love the artwork of Mask to Mask. It is a good, good outfit. And then I descended upon the office of CEO... On the office of the CEO of KB Security. 
You descended upon his... You took the elevator. What? Nick, did you know about this? He never told me this. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either. <laughs> Go to... Even I didn't know that. It seems our little friend really loves to keep secrets. Sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. Wait. That's not right. Um, you know how sometimes things just slip your mind? Ha! My sixth cup of coffee is staring up at me coldly. At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. I'd been killed if I hadn't been wearing my mask to mask costume. Okay. What's wrong with taking the elevator? Well, it's not descending upon it, is it? Descending upon it sounds like you swooped in out of the night. Not just, you know, sat in an elevator for a minute listening to Calypso music or whatever the hell was playing as you went up to the CEO's office. I feel like if Batman got stuck in traffic in the Batmobile and said, I got here as quick as I could. Like, eh, maybe you don't. Don't mention how you got here this time, Bats. Why were you dressed up as Mask to Mask? Why? Because I'm Mask to Mask, of course. What are you talking about? Mask to Mask's trial was being held next door. Ah, yes, I guess so. Anyway, at that time, I thought I was being blackmailed over the Mask to Mask issue. So I thought I should go as him, just to be safe. Oh, boy. Let me tell you, it's a real pain to move around with that cape. That's why it took a lot longer than I expected. Uh, so your suit was not designed with practical, dexterous movement in mind, I see. Took a lot longer? What is he talking about? Um, what do you mean by took a lot longer? Oh, opening the safe, of course. How's that now? My cape got caught in the safe door, you see. Oh, when you were stuffing the body- Okay, well. This all happened when I was hiding Mr. Boulard's body. But well, what was that? Back up a second! Yes? You were the one that hid the body in the safe? Um, well, yeah. Inconceivable! That's why we don't wear capes. It's true! Haven't you seen The Incredibles? Why? Just, why? What reason could you have? What are you thinking, man? Question. When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Laundry day. Um, what? The answer is simple. When they take them off. No, I put them in the hamper when I take them off. Then, like, after the hamper's full, it goes to the machine. You fucking weirdo. As usual, I have no idea what you're saying. Do you mean Mr. Delight hid the body because he's the murderer? Ha! <laughs> So you're not as stupid as you look. Thank you. Wait. His metaphor this time was really obscure. Mr. Wright, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe business. Do you? I mean, fucking Gumshoe knew about it. I assumed this was information you had access to, Your Honor. Um, well, yes. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Witness, make sure you add this to your testimony. Yes, sir. Uh-oh, looks like a storm front's moving in on the fair weather judge. Panicked in, the body is safe. Whoop, took about ten minutes. Uh... Took about ten minutes. Press that. Why did you hide the body in the safe anyway? Well... Because it wouldn't fit in a drawer. Fucking hysterical, Ron. Uh, that's not exactly what I meant. When I saw the corpse, I kind of lost it. I thought, if they find his corpse, they'll think I did it. Ha! Huh. I think you had simpler reason than that. It's because you killed him. That's why you spent ten minutes hiding the body. Hmm, that certainly makes more sense. Ugh. Hold on. Ten minutes. What is it, Nick? I just had a thought. Under those circumstances, would you normally try and hide a body? And spend ten whole minutes to do it? Under those circumstances, 
What circumstance? Oh. Hey, Nick. If you think his behavior was so strange, why don't you present some evidence that would show just what those circumstances were? That's it? I'll take a look at the court record and present some evidence. We heard this from Mr. Delight yesterday, didn't we? Uh, there's not much in the... Okay, yeah. You aren't good at your job, Judge. I'm surprised you managed to find your way to your job. Oh, he's been doing this for a while. Surely he knows the way. And by surely he knows the way, I mean, I'm gonna bet he sleeps under the bench. Alright, so what circumstances would have been... The buzzer went off once at 1.02 a.m. Probably that, right? No fingerprints. Harshed. Time of death, 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Yeah, the alarm was going off. Oh, and the, the alarm's quite loud, too. So, we were there when Gumshoe... With Gumshoe when it was set off. So... Take that, you son of a bitch. Your Honor, could you please look at this record? And what might this be? The record for the emergency buzzer that connects CEO's office to security. If the button in the office is pressed, a security team is supposed to come running. And according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once at 1.02 a.m. Wh what? If Mr. Rondelite truly was the murderer... He would have ran as soon as the buzzer was sounded. After all, security guard would have been heading his way. Ha! Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there were security personnel in the building. Up until one year ago, my client was working as chief of security. There's no way he wouldn't have known about them. But, as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact the guard was a pathetic loser. Let the record show. <laughs> Who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend. Oh, God, Larry. Larry seems like the kind of guy who would get a pet crow to impress a girl, you know? And then he'd carry it around on his shoulder, but it would peck at his head constantly and steal his food. Just torment him. And wasn't anywhere in the vicinity when uh, it was not... Bleh, and wasn't anywhere in the vicinity. It was not something Mr. Delight could have known. Objection. Ha! Again, remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet Mr. Delight didn't even notice the buzzer going off. This is a lot of back and forth objections. This buzzer, extremely loud. There's no way he could have ignored something like that. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscience? Conscious? What do you mean by that? Ugh. I say that, Larry Butts would absolutely have a crow that would ruin his life. He would. Uh, one of the games actually has a prosecutor, Blackwell, I think, that has a, uh, a pet falcon, which, I don't know, based on the fact that falconers are a thing, I assume make better pets. Fine. Let's hear your theory. Recall the defendant's testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight said he felt dazed. I'm willing to wager that he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted? That's why Mr. Delight didn't know the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. So what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out, and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now, unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he was unconscious... It can only mean there was another person in that room. That's right. Whoever it was, they knocked out Ron Delight and pressed the buzzer. This song is so much better in MIDI. Order in the court. Mr. Wright, this, this is... This is preposterous. It was this kid. Ron Delight is the one who killed Kane Boulevard. Then who pressed the buzzer? It was the victim, of course. He pressed the buzzer when the defendant attacked him. He didn't die right away. He must have held on long enough to push the button. Ah! Well then, why'd he stick around and put him in the safe then? Falcons are good for hunting and such. I'm not sure you make for good pets. Uh, for non-hunters or people who do falconry a sport. Well, yeah, obviously. I didn't say they made good pets. I said they made better pets than crows is all I said. 
Mmm, so Kane Boulard sounded the buzzer himself. What's your opinion on that, Mr. Wright? I need to prove you the real criminal was at the scene, but how? Well, the buzzer doesn't have any fingerprints on it, right? Uh... There are no fingerprints. Correct. Okay, so... I can prove it all right. I hope. <clears throat> the defense's opinion is this, Your Honor. Blech. This piece of evidence proves it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzer. It's the buzzer. Yes. You can always tell you got it right when the danger meter slides away. I believe this piece of incontroversial evidence we are looking for. The emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. Hey, come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before opening your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. You said it, Your Honor. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Boulard had really pushed it himself. Naturally, it would have left his fingerprints behind! <laughs> Ron Delight obviously wiped them off. Objection. Why would he? A guard could have come in at any moment. Also, why would he put the body in the safe? We already talked about that, but never mind, I guess. He touched the button. I know he did. Objection. The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as mask to mask. And Mask to Mask always wears gloves. What reason could he have to wipe his fingerprints free of the bu d d d d d d Fuck you! Order, order, order. Ha, it would seem. I've been forced to eat crow. No, he's eating his own pets! This stream is way too into the crows today, all of a sudden. I don't know what happened. Fucking Jeppo asked suddenly if he could have a crow as a pet. Noki was like, yo, actually, I got this. And I'm like, damn, crow discourse is strong. I brought it back as a joke, and now this guy's bringing it up. I wonder what blend number crow-flavored coffee is. However, if the real killer was at the scene, why would the person press the emergency buzzer? I caused this? Yeah, you did. How do you feel? There, crows are wicked smart, though. There's, like, certain crows in Japan that have figured out uh, stoplight patterns and certain, like, nuts that uh, their shells are way too hard to break. So they leave the shells on crosswalks, wait for cars to run them over, and then when the light changes, they drop down to eat what's now left over from the nut that was shattered by the fucking car. That's crazy smart. Should they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? What's with this awkward silence all of a sudden? Ha! It looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. No! What? No! My argument is that he was knocked out! Which, in this scenario, is the only thing that makes sense. They're on to you, Nick. Just give me a minute to collect my thoughts. Blech. The real culprit killed Mr. Boulard around 1 a.m. And Mr. Delight just happened to waltz into the room when the murder was taking place, right? The killer clobbered Mr. Delight and then sounded the buzzer. Even though security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer was pressed, security was supposed to respond. Hmm. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. Oh, you've got some guts. I like that in an opponent. Is God just having an assistant off-screen just like coffee mugs when he demands it? No, we determined uh, last stream it's Gumshoe. He's just, you know, got Gumshoe there sliding him coffee cups whenever he needs it. I actually joked it'd be funnier if it was Ron Delight he somehow tricked into doing it, but that doesn't really work now when he's on the witness stand. <laughs> Phoenix, the master mask is always wearing gloves, and if Cinnamon Bun there is the mask, could have easily pushed the button. Right, but he wouldn't have bothered to wipe it if his prints weren't on it, was the point. There's no prints on the button. If Kane pushed the button... Kane couldn't have pushed the button, because otherwise fingerprints would have been there. Delight couldn't have pushed the button, because otherwise his fingerprints would be on there, not taking time to stop and wipe them down. 
etc., etc., etc. We need Columbo. Uh, I mean, this whole thing is insane because why would he stuff the body in the safe while the alarm was going off is the other problem they're conveniently not bringing up. They're talking about this button an awful long time. It's spoiler sliding him the mugs. Uh, of course, spoilers are sliding him the mugs. Uh, why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? They didn't mean to, to call a security guard to find out what it did. <laughs> Maya! Uh, no, they wanted to call a security guard because clearly, based on the silhouette, Luke Atme is setting them up and uh, he wanted the guards to come running and find them at the scene of the crime while he escaped. The killer knew that if they pressed the button, a guard would come running. And that's exactly what they wanted. Do you mean to say the killer called the guard on purpose? Yes. Although, as it turns out, he never showed up. Because again, uh, to quote Phoenix Wright, the guard was a sad, useless man who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend. On the record, by the way. Yep, there you go. Because he was getting his clock cleaned at the time. Ha! What a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in. No, I'm not. When the buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. The victim, Kane Boulard, who was already dead. The defendant, Ron Delight, who was out cold. And a third person, the real killer, who based on the silhouette could only be Will Powers. Hypothetically, yes. I wonder. Yeah, it's they're not shy about it. <laughs> now then, in this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would have happened? The only ones left in the room would be the victim, Ron Delight. And, and if any security guards came running in at the time, they would think I was the murderer. Maybe it's Majima. Yeah, you know, maybe. Maybe it's Chris Redfield, Capcom sensation. Yes, that was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Ron Delight for the murder! It's actually Cecil from uh, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. I do love the he takes a drink just to do a spit take. As annoying and preachy as I find Godot to be uh, so far anyway, maybe he gets better. Uh, <laughs> the commitment to the spit take is good. Order! Order! Ha! It would seem. I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, I've been made to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Er, wait. Wait a second. I'm the one and only masked to mask, so... Nick! You mean the real killer is... We're gonna drag that person in here right now! But, but who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity. They also knew that he had been called to KB Security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Boulard. Cecil is possessing the mugs and making them slide themselves. <laughs> yes, we finally cracked it. Now we know exactly how those coffee mugs get there. Hmm, now then, let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Rondelite for the murder of Kane Boulard? Well, obviously it was Larry Butts. I just had to do it. Who else could it be? <laughs> had to do it. <clears throat> Nathan, you're unbanned. Now then, ahem. Who is it actually? Detective Luke at me. He's the only one who could have done it. Ace Detective. Luke at me? You mean Mask to Mask did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in the court next to us is not mask to mask at all. He is, in actuality, the true murderer of Cain Millard! This would mark one of the very few times uh, Wright's client was actually guilty. Uh, Ron Delight here, being guilty of being mask to mask, the thing we just got him found not guilty for. 
Order, order! Mr. Wright, explain yourself! Theft and murder. Which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime subject to capital punishment. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. Get up and move. Uh. <sighs> uh. Uh. Whoop! All right, there we go. Points well spent, Nathan. When Luke Atme confessed, there was huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course, the famous detective was unmasked as well. Mask to mask. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. That was his true objective all along. To be found guilty. Mask to mask had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lordly Taylor. Yeah, how did that happen? If Kane, if, well, Kane Blord, if Ron Delight and Luke Atme were both at KB Security, who's this guy? In other words, being found guilty as Mask to Mask was Luke Acme's airtight water by a sale alibi. A guilty verdict as an alibi. You know, it's almost time. For what? For Luke Acme's verdict. It was a pretty simple trial after all. If we're going to stop this trial and stall that one, we need to do it now. Of course. That's assuming you have proof the detective was the one who committed the murder. <gasps> Mr. Lukatmi's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. If we were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof of his true crime, Mrs. Light would be left with no grounds for appeal. Clearly it's Mask to Mask the Second. I mean... <laughs> the dude who showed up dead to the fucking game? Yeah, all right. Am I really sure about this? Nice use of the star, by the way. Ha! Huh. A bet's only good when your life's the ante. That's not true at all. Spoken like a man who doesn't play cards. Using at me security software, weren't they? Oh, that's true. He had... No, what did he have access to? Lordly Taylor provided all the security equipment... He, uh, had, like, the software on the computer to manage it? I guess he could have manipulated the time on the photo, in that case. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I'm remembering that accurately. Mr. Wright, I, I believe in you. Mr. Delight. So, so, please, I'm begging you. Thanks, but my decision will determine the rest of your life. Can I really risk your life like this? Fedax! Well, I mean, listen. Uh, either you do it and... There's three outcomes. You don't do it and he's tried for murder. Bing, bang, boom. He goes to jail forever. You do this. It doesn't work. He's tried for murder. Bing, bang, boom. Jail forever. You do this. It works. He's let off the hook. I... I really don't see why you're hesitating here. What was that? Don't stray, Phoenix. For your client, take the path of trust. That voice? It sounds like... Standing right next to me in an incredibly revealing outfit. Mia! Oh. <laughs> your Honor, the Prince Quest Immediate Recess! Ha! So that's your answer, huh? Very well. I've decided as well. This court will now take a 20-minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Mr. Luke at me to the stand. Yes, Your Honor! You know, Majima is a master of disguise. Well, I don't know if he is. As for who it, as for who it actually is, you'll find out. Uh, who actually who is. Oh, Master Mask 2? I don't know. <laughs> Pain. God damn it. <laughs> well, sir, Detective Acme. Oh, God. 
I have to say, Mr. Payne, you performed splendidly. Oh no, Sir Detective Atney, you are the one who... <laughs> Hello, I'm a younger, blonde judge with more hair. That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. The court finds the defendant, Luke Atme. As long as it's Atme software, he didn't need equipment uh, at the expo. Atme could easily tamper with it. Yeah, I can't remember if that is the case or not, but it was something like that. First appearance of the second judge. Oh, God, is it? Is there no other judge up to this point? I guess there isn't. How many judges are there? There's obviously a judge, this blonde one. Uh, Courtney in the second Edgeworth game. Uh, the one in whatever the Crane country's name is in Spirit of Justice. Uh, Professor Layton, the judge and the other judge from uh, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. The one in Japan and the one in England. I think that's it. So seven judges. Don't hand down your verdict yet, please. Well, well, Sir Lawyer, welcome to my courtroom. The fuck, I forgot. He's Canadian. Oh, those eyes, good lord. Who's this hoser, eh? My name's Phoenix Wright, he's attorney at law. Or just attorney at law, I guess. My bad. I wish to file an accusation against this man. Look at me. Judge Vince McMahon. They're called the second judge the blondie is established to later be Greenbeard's brother. Oh, God. I mean, you can tell the resemblance. In the trial of Eric Bischoff, indeed. Accusation? You accuse Mask to Mask? That man is not Mask to Mask. He's just a ruthless murderer. What? The courtroom goes wild. Also, he wears his rings on his middle finger because he's a twat. They go on your ring finger, dickhead. That's why it's called your ring finger. Admittedly, you can wear a ring on whatever finger you want, but it bothers me he wears it on his middle finger. My sis? I could have sworn I heard Mia's voice. So then, she's still alive. Inside your heart. I mean, didn't we establish that in the last game when she channeled you? Maybe even two games ago? I don't really remember when that happened the first time. Nikki boy! Oh, Miss Delight. Is it true the detective is the real killer? But to be honest, we don't have any definitive proof. I mean... This fucking thing's kind of damning. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day instead. Didn't he get the diamond from, like, the museum? The Tear of Eminon or whatever it is? No, hold on. They have a list for that. Uh, the... Uh... Oh, they might have given him the Tear of Eminon, I guess. He got back the portrait of Megina. They certainly didn't give him the Hand of Hades or the Crown of Bongora. Mr. Bischoff was guilty uh, and got... AA'd into a trash compactor by John Cena. Ah, he got ace attorneyed by John Cena, you say. That makes sense. But he's the only one who could have done it. But wasn't he at the Lordly Taylor that night? Not to mention, we don't exactly know his motive. I mean, why would Detective Atme want to kill Kane Boulard? Well, again, the blackmail letter's kind of damning, but... Uh... Oops, it's almost time. Better get back to the courtroom. I need to find some solid proof. And it's got to happen sooner rather than later. You'd play an Ace Attorney wrestling game? Instead of objections, you DDT people. Now then, court is back in session. The judge, like, rips off the robe. He's actually crazy jacked. Mr. Luke Hatney, please take the stand. Well, well, how do you do, sir lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so reckless now. I couldn't let them hand down your verdict just yet. Not when it would have given you your perfect alibi. An alibi the name of Mask to Mask. I'm sorry, I'm afraid even the great Luke Acme has no idea what you mean. Of course, I have been in the next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. 
I'm afraid there's no way I could know what's been going on over here. You've been in the defendant's seat all day long, correct? Being tried is mask to mask. Indeed, it's truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the poor fools ask me to protect their valuables, they even gave me a generous reward upon returning their own property to them. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine finger, for example. Well, you know, as long as he doesn't draw attention to it or anything. I wonder who was at Mies attorney in that trial. Uh... Ugh. He represented himself, obviously. He actually went outside, found a crow, gave it some shiny nickels, and said, here, be my lawyer. And the crow was like, hell yeah, got this. So you continue to insist that you are, in fact, mask to mask. Of course. Very well then, look at me. Let us begin with this simple question. On October 12th at 1 a.m., Cain Boulard was murdered. Where were you at that time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, Sir Judge. Um, thanks. Ah, so it was the Adagarasu then, indeed. As his defense attorney. All right, Mr. Atme. The night of the murder. Speak. We're all ears. As you wish, sir prosecutor. I was stealing the urn as mask the mask, just as I announced I would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was a pathetically easy job. A photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. The time at which the camera captured Mask the Mask is the same time as this murder. Can Robocop be Godot along with Sting? How could two men be one? That's just silly. Hmm. Also, an Ace Attorney wrestling game wouldn't have wrestlers doing Ace Attorney things. It would turn the Ace Attorney characters into wrestlers. The judge would be ripped and his whole thing would be like the, the jacked monk guy. And he'd, you know, work the giant gavel into his... Uh, Routine. Obviously. It would seem the main point of the discussion will be the photo of the crime scene. Everything else up till now was all part of his plan. There has to be a secret in this picture as well. Even the great mask the mask cannot be in two places at once. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I have a verdict to receive. Unfortunately, Mr. Atme, we still have to do your cross-examination. A fool is too foolish to know that he is a fool. A German woman told me that once. I think he's trying to say you're full of it, Nick. The only thing that he's full of, that's full of it, is his alibi. Yeah, got him. All right. So this photograph is the proof, correct? Indeed it is. And the man in the photo is certainly wearing a mask. But who is that masked man? That is why I'm called Mask de Mask. But conveniently, that also means there's no way to tell who it really was. In fact, if we look at your giant fucking schnoz, we can see there's no way this is you. What do you mean? Your Honor, look at his fucking beak! There's, it's sarcastic how big his fucking nose is. There's no way he's fitting it in the mask. Are you saying that this is not, in fact, Luke at me? That it could be an accomplice dressed as mask to mask to create an alibi? Oh, what an interesting idea! Are you saying that I, Lone Wolf Luke, had an accomplice? Uh, no, I don't think he had an accomplice. Somehow it's Larry Butts. Look at me, was at KB Security during the murder. Then mask to mask was in this picture, it had to be a fake then there really was an accomplice. But right now, I have no idea who it was. Mm, I don't have a clue right now either. Basal subjections are just what this guy wants. There's got to be another way, and I'm going to find it. More enough time to prepare. I believe Adrian Andrews hired you at one point. 
That's right. Uh, that was over 20 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. You sent this calling card to Lorelei Taylor 10 days before the heist? That would mean you sent out the card after you began your security watch, right? Indeed, there was no reason why I couldn't do both jobs at once. It was the perfect opportunity to steal my latest target. I see. You truly are evil, aren't you? Yes, evil is what I am. Hey, Nick. Is there something odd about this? Mm hmm. Nick of Atme was always proud of his ace detective skills, right? But if the urn was stolen from Lloyd Taylor while he was the only one watching it, he'd have no way to maintain his perfect ace detective persona. You know, that's true. It's kind of odd. Yeah. Hmm. Why would you why would you create a scenario in which mask to mask got the better of you and then robbed it from out under your giant fucking nose? So by photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here. Is that correct? Indeed it is. That is it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. When you think about it, it is really odd. You say that almost as if you had this picture taken on purpose. Objection. He was simply caught by the very camera he set up. And you don't find that at all suspicious. We all have days like that. Yeah, all right. Fair. I'll cop to that. <laughs> Indeed. It turned out there was no such thing as a perfect crime after all. Life is truly an ironic thing. A sad blue melody. Looks like I'd better gather more information for now. He got caught by his own camera. Mr. Wright, we've all been there. Phoenix is like, yeah, I guess so. If he's truly the killer, there's got to be something phony in that photo. Time which camera, same time as the murder. How about the camera that took this photograph? Oh, come now, it's all too clear what you're thinking. Huh? You think I altered the timestamp on the photograph, don't you? The thought had crossed my mind. I'm afraid that's impossible. The camera was set up by Wardley Taylor, and on top of that... It was Lovely Taylor's staff that printed that picture's data. Yeah, but he had access to the software. Unfortunately for the defense, there's no way that picture could have been altered. I see! Looks like I better find something else that could be suspicious. So, this alibi is false. It has to be, or he couldn't have killed Mr. Boulard at KB Security. But I'm not really spotting anything unusual. There are two possibilities. Either the mask to mask in the photo is fake, or the photo itself is. I guess it's possible that could have been taken at any time, right? It's... Oh, wait. Hold on. It's timestamp, but it's not date stamped, right? Is that what's going on here? That is, it's not date stamped. This could have been a different day. When was the, um... Like, the statue and all that moved? Carried out into the warehouse, moved again that night. That would be that night. Don't, no idea where this came from, if any of this happened. Uh, there's this. Why'd you lose this from your fucking costume at this point? Cerebral hemorrhaging. Two. Broken. Present with Maya. Goes to the treasures of Kirain. Is it the paint? What box is Sacred Urn in it has pink paint stains on it? I mean... Two weeks ago, she also knocked over some paint. The box doesn't appear to have paint on it there. But I don't know, that's flimsy. Well, no, I mean, the stain where the paint was and the box landed are there. That's not the most clear, though, because when I see this, I assume this was just after the statue was moved. I guess the box would still have paint on it then, wouldn't it? But then I guess we go down the road of why'd you move the damn statue? I don't know. The, the only thing I can think is it's the box with paint on it. Because, I mean, the angle of this photo, 
makes it clear this is where the box should have paint on it, and yet it doesn't, in this photo anyway. But I mean, he is covering a portion of it, so... Uh, announced I would. More than enough time. Uh, contains no words, but in this case, one turned to be a witness. The time the camera captured was the same as the time of the murder. Well, again, my, my two thoughts are, uh, this was taken on a different day, because the day isn't stamped on the photo, and the box should have paint on it. I have no idea if that's the correct way to be going or what, but... No. Cool. Huh. Uh. This with the paint? Because it was two weeks ago? Nope. All right. To the guide. Guide? Oh, absolutely. 100% guide. Uh. Oh, god damn it. Did they do it again? I hate when they do this. Uh, photograph contains no words. This one turned out to be a witness. By photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here. Indeed, very thing that proves. Commit the crime. I'm sure you understand. There's no way I could have tampered with it. I could not have killed Cain Boulard unless I had an accomplice. Oh, I need to say you bet to this? Oh, isn't there something funny about this picture? Yeah, this is new. I had to press him again. I hate when they do this. Stop doing this. Stop making me press statements more than once. Just give me something to contradict. Are you implying that this picture is a fake? You bet I am. There's definitely something strange about this picture. We took a look around the basement warehouse that night before the theft took place. And there's something in this photo that doesn't match the memory of that night. Just to make sure. Uh, yeah, it's the large paint spill on the floor. So I was absolutely 100% on the right path, but obviously I needed to press the statement I already pressed again to unlock the new thing that was in no way indicated I unlocked a new dialogue path. Uh, what about the photograph is funny? Uh, it's wide present. The paint stain! The funny part is, right here. Why this, this is a blood stain. Ah, blood, now this case is getting interesting. Um, not exactly, the stain is actually pink paint. Oh, just paint, and peach colored at that. Blood to peaches, the judge sure loves going on his wild tangents. The problem with this photograph is not the paint. The problem is, when you consider the layout of the basement warehouse, it turns out something that should be there is nowhere to be seen. Well, Mr. Wright? I mean, it's got to be this, right? But it was moved that night. Oh, wait. Unless they mean... By day of the crime, do they mean because it is 1 a.m. that day? But then it was moved later. Like, the crime took place on the 13th or whatever. So the day of the crime, they're referring to the 13th, also 1 a.m. the day of, oh my god. <sighs> yeah, that might be it. That might be what I'm missing. Because I think 1 a.m. is night. But I guess technically that would be the day of the crime. Moved that night being like 20 hours after this photo was taken. Even though it's very much supposed to be logic-based, logic is sometimes lost on you. Yeah, they definitely, uh, there are some weak logic points in order to tell a better story. Which, I get. For the sake of a game and an entertaining narrative, I get. It is frustrating at times, though. Anyway, this is clearly meant to be there. The supervisor of the, also, hi, my wife. You and your rat jams. Supervisor of the treasure exhibit stated the following. Well, there's a good reason that on the day of the crime around noon... The golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain train. Oh no, what? Okay, now I don't understand what they're talking about. I realized the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stain. That's why I put it there when I first saw it. 
I myself was there the night the theft took place and saw the statue in that spot. Yeah, but it's now moved. He's just gonna say, I moved it, then took the picture. This isn't... This isn't a good argument. If this picture was truly taken that night, then that statue should have been there! Objection. But when I went there the day after the theft, that statue of the old bag was sitting in the corner. Which, I'll point out, by the way, for those of you watching at home, well out of range of what this photograph is showing, by the way. It goes to, like, just past the floor light, which... Uh, no, you can't even see the next support beam in this photo. There's support beam light, and then another support beam with the statue on it. You don't even get to the other support beam. You can't see the statue if it was there in that photo. Hmm. Perhaps it was somehow pushed there accidentally. Your Honor, this statue is slightly larger than yourself and quite heavy. It would be more than an accident to move, push, push to move at that distance. In that case, can you prove it? Can you give us the rhyme and reason as to why the statue was moved that night? No, I can't. I have no idea. Can you do it, Nick? Never mind who moved it. The real question is, why did they move it? I mean, I am wondering why as well. Well, Mr. Wright, I hope you're prepared with your answer. Now then, who was the one that moved the golden statue the night of the crime? I mean, surely it has to be Luke at me, right? Or Mask to Mask in this case, I guess, but... It's gotta be Luke, right? He was the only one that was there, and we're... Tr no, wait, he wasn't there. Shit. We're trying to say he was at Kane Boulard's. Fuck, who moved this thing? Who was there that night? Who the fuck was there that night? You were at KB Security. We're trying to prove you were at KB Security. You were at KB Security. You're not on trial. God, I wish it was you. You might not have been there, so... And Adrian say she moved it. She moved it there originally at noon, but then later that night, someone else moved it. So she moved it the first time onto the paint. We need to find who moved it off the paint. You weren't there. I guess I could say you. Because you were, I mean, you're there in the photo. You weren't involved, hopefully. Obviously it was pearls. We just need to find out how. Uh, you were eating burgers, you freak. You're dead. Pretty solid alibi. And I would know if it was me. A young but skilled lawyer. Nice use of the parentheses there. Mia? Uh, mask? What do you think, Mr. Godot? A man should be able to answer his own questions. That's what I think. Right now I'm busy trying to come up with two answers of my own. Why is coffee black? And why is it bitter? Well, I mean, it's, it's bean juice, my guy. The, the coffee beans are the color they are. And the water absorbs the coffee and becomes... That's... You can put cream in it and sugar if you want to change those things. And people frequently do. Mr. Wright, put it simply, you've messed up. What are you doing, Nick? You need to think about why the statue has moved. Good thing to do when everyone's claws me... Or choose me... Claws. Choose me out, that is. Give me... <laughs> The good thing about when everyone chews me out is that it gives me time to think. Well, Mr. Wright, hope you have your answer prepared. Well, I'm not penalized, so I can just brute force this if I need to. Why is the statue... I wish I had, like... I just presented myself. Your Honor, I did it! <laughs> really? Godot, what do you think? Yeah, no. Alright, my bad. <laughs> I wish I had a photo of, like, the warehouse so I could see. Move that night. Why would it have been moved? Off of the paint. And over there. I don't get it. Why would it have been moved? Maybe the sword had something to do with it? I don't know. Security camera photo. Publicity photo. Yeah, no. There's no photo of just the warehouse that I can look at. 
Dead, dead, impossible, impossible. No. Apparently not. Uh. Guide again. I don't want to use the guide as a crutch, but like. Who could have possibly moved this fucking thing? And again, why? The only thing, in the back of my head, the only thing I can think is that, like, A, I'm still on the, this photo was taken on a different day, because it's not date stamped, it's only time stamped. B, uh, the other option is that, like, oh! 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 Oh, 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 oh! Wait a minute. Uh... This? Because hear me out, Ron lost his first mask to mask costume. Luke at me kept it as a trophy. Ron and Luke were at KB security during this uh, murder. Uh, what if Luke dressed like a dummy up as the mask to mask and then rigged it to like slide on by on the push cart that the fucking statue's on? So that it looked like zoom. Because in the back of my mind, I was like, man, that hand card on the golden statue. I keep forgetting if it was there or not. And then I remembered he had his own uh, mask to mask outfit. I don't know how the fuck I would prove that. Luke, maybe? Yeah, I guess. The one who moved the statue is none other than Luke at me. Come now, say lawyer. There you go again. Uh, so, there you go again on one of your strange delusions. Mr. Wright, what basis do you have to for your strange delusions? It's very simple. The witness was the only one in the basement of the warehouse that night. Yeah, so, Phoenix, recall, is that is indeed very simple. However, why would I want to move a heavy golden statue? Aren't we trying to prove he was at KB security? Why are we doing this, Phoenix? The reason for moving the golden statue, here's where our battle really begins. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason did the witness have to move the statue? The reason can be found in this here photograph. Look at me. You pretended to be mask to mask. To create an alibi uh, while you, by showing you were at Lordly Taylor that night. But this photograph contains a single fatal flaw. If the statue had been there, your lie would be exposed like the cheap film at a drugstore. That's why you had to move the statue. A single fatal flaw? Interesting theory. Please enlighten us. Uh... The, 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 um... I can't... Oh, I can... Whoops. I was trying to check my court record, and I... Hey, good news is I still have meter, so I'm pretty sure I can at least, you know, bullshit my way out of this. <laughs> the lie! Oh, wait, did I get it? The lie is Master Mask! Oh, shit, uh, I meant to do that. I totally meant to do that. Are you saying this Master Mask is a fake? Ha. <laughs> you know, I really wish you would start acting more responsibly. Huh? The current question is, why was the golden statue moved? So what possible connection could there be with Mask to Mask's identity? Oh, buggers. Your face has oh, buggers written all over it. Ah, there we go. That's a penalty for you. All right, to the guide. Uh, da -ba -da -ba. Oh, the timestamp. I guess it is uh, a date, but I gotta, gotta hit the timestamp. Naturally, the line in this photo is the timestamp. What do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. On the night in question, Luke Abney went to KB Security and murdered Kane Boulard. Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to have been Lordly Taylor all this time. Boy, it took a long time to get there. But it was, I think, a fake date. Or a different day. But what does that have to do with the statue being moved? Remember, if you will, Your Honor, 
When was this statue placed beside the warehouse door? Well, the statue was taken down to the warehouse the day of the crime. And it was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Luke at me had already decided on the time he was going to kill the victim. And so in order to create an alibi for that time. He took this picture days before the murder took place. What the? Of course, the statue hadn't been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. Ah. So on the day of the crime, Mr. Atme must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. I mean, I get it, but what? Why? Because something that wasn't supposed to be there had been brought down and placed where it wasn't supposed to be. And that is why Luke had me had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did make the room match. He did to make the room match the way it had been in the photo. Guarl. Order, order. Mr. Adme, is this true? One moment, your honor. Have you forgotten this? What's that? The data for the basement warehouse computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. It's true the camera had been set up by Lordly Taylor staff. However, the program used to manage data was yours. That alone would have allowed you to tamper with the data. Ah! Order, order! Mr. Godot, what is the meaning of this? Godot! I warned you about making me wait. Now put that coffee down. My eleventh cup. I've promised to drink no more than 17 during a trial. Which means I'm still good to the last drop. Is the Maxwell House slogan, I think? However, the defense has a very good point. A good point. So what? We are all but travelers on a road of infinite points. Boy, when you put it that way, uh, shut up and try and counteract my argument or I win. Um, I think he's got his points mixed up with his other points. So you say this photograph was taken ahead of time, and the statue was moved in order to make it match. That's a very interesting idea, however. There's one point I can't be denied. Which is... That it's only a possibility. He really just did the meme where he's like, interesting argument, however, and then slammed his titties on the desk. Which, you know, he seems like the type who would do that. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe. Yeah, see what I mean? He talks like a man who slams his titties at people. And coffee. Can never reach their dreams. That's very true. No way. Don't fall for that, Your Honor. It's literally bullshit. That doesn't make any sense. Hey, Mr. Damask. D yes If there's no funny business in your actions as Mask Damask, there should be no problem with you telling us your strategy. So let's hear it. Yes, please provide the court with your testimony about your plan to steal the sacred urn. I've only going an hour and a half, good lord. I would have thought at least two. I first received a request from Lordly Taylor about 20 days ago. The urn was placed in a box in Zvari. It was sent to the warehouse. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. I knew it was extremely valuable treasure, so I sent my card 10 days beforehand. This fucking schnoz poking out from the boxes. Solid snake he is not. I then handed secu handled security by myself to ensure my crime would go smoothly. Never mind the other person there. At last, I held the urn in my hands for the first time at 1 a.m. on October 12th. Well, I mean, isn't the urn worthless? Isn't that is that the argument? That's pretty much all the stuff we've heard before, isn't it? Yeah, but we will find the truth hidden in the nuggets of new information he gave. Witness, you're sure there are no mistakes this time? Zvari. Very well, then. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay. 
20 days ago. You were asked to guard the urn by Miss Adrian Andrews, is that right? Indeed, it seems that they heard of my zvakling reputation. I see Miss Andrews is still attracting the weirdos. What does that mean? Who in the last case with her was a weirdo? Like the Shelly, I guess? You better watch out too, Maya. Yarma's place in a box in Zvari. You mean this box? Yes, that it's not pathetic. It's just a box. Lady Andrews is especially taken with that urn. And she wouldn't let anyone enter the storeroom. Not even me. Huh. Interesting new tidbit. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. So you're sure that you had never seen this urn before? Indeed. You may ask Lady Andrews to confirm yourself. My security was focused entirely on the entrance to the warehouse. However, I look at me, let no information whatsoever slip through my fingers. It was from Valleyborn. Ten days beforehand. You mean this calling card? That's right! That is without a doubt my calling card. I guess Mr. Delight didn't make this after all. Of course. Because Abby knew about the emblem. Making the card authentic would have been child's play for him. I handled security myself to ensure the crime would go smoothly. Then no one entered the basement warehouse. Unfortunately, there were many different treasures being taken there. Thus, for a period of approximately five days, people were indeed going in and out of the warehouse. At least more expect a box to look like. This regular wooden box does its job of sorting stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit, you know, simplistic, but I would hardly call that pathetic. Hmm. It's not even that simplistic. It looks like it's got grooves so that one side slides open instead of just, you know, being lifted up. Last I held my her bleh, the urn in my hands for the first time, 1 a.m. on October 12th. And this is the photo that proves that. Indeed, to be honest, even if a photo was taken, I didn't think it would matter terribly much. Hey, Nick, if this photo is a fake, you back me might have stolen the urn whenever this was taken. That's true. You know, he's been saying he never saw the urn until that night. If we can prove he's lying there, we can wrap this up and put a bow on it. Hey, take a good hard look at the court record. I actually don't. I caught this ages ago. I've just been waiting for an opportunity to bring it up. I get it! They were banging on there. I didn't even read it. Not able to see the urn. So, in the, uh... In the calling card, he mentions it's a speckled urn. Uh, but in the poster, the urn is not speckled. It's all shattered and crappy. Uh, which means he knows it's speckled, which means he saw it after it was broke, which means he saw it after Adrian put it down there. It's a regular wooden box. How fancy is it supposed to be? Arg, clearly this box is pathetic. I mean, just look at the way it's not box-shaped at all and doesn't do its job of being a box in any way, shape, or form. Anyway, yeah, I believe it's the calling card. Objection! Mr. Atme, if you really are Mask Demask, then you also wrote this calling card, correct? But of course. Is there a problem with the calling card? Allow me to read a passage from the calling card that Mask Demask has written. Take a good care of that speckled urn. Now the speckled here surely refers to the pink pattern of the sacred urn. Yes, that is true, but so what? Truth be told, there's no way that Mask and Mask could have known about this pattern. What do you mean? This pink spotted pattern on the urn is actually nothing more than paint stains. Paint stains? And these stains did not appear until after the urn had been taken to the Lordly Tailor! Hamf. I'm not finding this joke to be very funny, Mr. Trite. The day of the sacred urn was taken to the warehouse. I would like to remind everyone Miss Andrews is a klutz. The urn was broken due to human error, or should I say, an error-prone human. All right. Way to fucking put her down, Nick. And that's when the pink paint got on the urn. Ugh, you can't be serious. 
And yet this calling card clearly mentions the paint pattern. Which means... Detective Abney had seen this urn long before the crime ever took place. In fact, he saw it when the photo was taken. <laughs> and because this photo is a fake, your alibi for the night of murder is no longer holds water. <laughs> yeah, I clocked that error ages ago, but never got a chance to bring it up until now. I didn't know it would result in this, but I clocked that that was a problem ages ago. Witness. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Um, all right, that did it. He's broken. Um, Nick, I think it's still a little early for a victory pose. Huh? Huh. It's so sad. No one has any conviction these days. Conviction, you say? Yesterday, we all decided unanimously that this man was mask to mask. And now we're calling him a murderer. You don't think we're being a tad fickle. That's a good point! No way! Don't fall for that too, your honor! You say that Luke Atme was the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then let me ask you this. Why would he do that? Oh, the blackmail letter that clearly mentions the uh, red diamond he received the other day. <laughs> An excellent point. Motive, Mr. Wright, motive. Might you, my merry murderous motive, manifest? Maybe! Nick, he's getting alliterative at you. If he prepared an alibi and pinned the crime on Ronda Light, as you say, he must have had a very strong motive for murder. The only one with any motive we've seen is Ronda Light. Isn't that right, detective? Indeed, according to my own research, the boy's motive is clear. Isn't your research, like, flawed because you are, like, a sham? Without a motive, it's nearly impossible to prove the guilt in a murder case. That's not true at all. They, people like to say you need motive. You don't. Motive can be whatever the hell. It can be for the hell of it if you need it to be. If you have on videotape a guy going, Hello, I'm Stephen Smith and I'm shooting this man. Bang, bang. And it's just Stephen Smith shooting a man. And then they play that tape in court. They're not going to go, Uh, objection. What's the motive? And then hold the trial up while they try and find the motive. That just doesn't happen. Motive is not necessary at all in cases like this. It helps, don't get me wrong, but it's not necessary. Now then, maybe you can enlighten us on as to what the defendant's motives were. I'd be honored to, Sir Old Timer. They're doing everything they can to make Ron look suspicious. Despite our lack of hard information, this may be our only chance. And yeah, I guess the judge did say nearly impossible, but again, you don't... A murder is... Or a murder. A motive is not needed to prove a murder at all. I look at me, had no point of contact with the victim whatsoever. Kane Boulard decided to investigate the mask the mask and simply mistook who he was. It was Mr. Boulard who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron Delight. It was again Mr. Boulard who harbored the garage against Mr. Delight for his betrayal. Mr. Boulard's mistake is quite excusable. The defendant truly believes he is mask the mask. Blech. That is why Mr. Light saw fit to kill Kane Boulard. Truly a tragedy. So the victim, Kane Boulard, blackmailed the defendant. This is the blackmail letter found in the defendant's apartment. A handwritten test confirms that Mr. Boulard was indeed the one who wrote the letter. Yeah, but he wrote it to Luke at me, who then forwarded it to Ron. Ron went there to become the fall guy for Luke. What? <laughs> Blackmail updated, written by Boulard. Very well, Mr. Wright. Be your cross-examination. So this one's easy, but yeah, you gotta just prove what we know. Motive's usually a nice bonus, a cherry on top. It's usually not required to establish guilt. No, not at all. Again, helps. Required, absolutely not. And who in the world is going to prove that? I will. What? After doing a thorough background check of Detective Atme and Kane Boulard, we were unable to find any links between them. It's all in the report. Hmm. 
Perhaps they were connected through their work? They are both involved in security. Nope. That was blunt. In any case, the only one who had the motive was Mr. Delight. Decide to investigate Master Mask. Mistook? That's right, Mistook. From the Old Norse Mistaka, meaning to take an error. Um, that wasn't what I meant. Just who did the victim mistake Mask to Mask for? Why, the answer is obvious. Ron Delight, of course. Boy, I'd like to wipe that smug look off this guy's face. Why would the victim mistake the defendant for mask to mask? Don't you already know that? Zvari, take a look at this newspaper. You could easily Photoshop this to make it look like he's picking his giant nose. Oh, the famous tear of Eminon, a magnificent jewel. That photo shows a magnificent detective as well, does it not? Uh, no, it shows you, you lying murderer. Alleged murderer, excuse me. Furthermore, it also shows an ugly guard, namely the defendant. How dare you? That man is the most beautiful man I've ever seen. The defendant? The victim clearly misread this article and Zvari. He got the wrong impression. Impression that this ugly again, how dare you? This beautiful security guard was in fact mask de mask. Mm, I see. That was an unusually reasonable deduction. Mr. Rollard wrote the blackmail letter and sent to Ron Delight. You mean this blackmail letter right here? It says, bring fifty thousand dollars. And the handwriting is without a doubt the victims. There's no mistake. We have an official report to prove. But I don't see an addressee on this letter anywhere. An addressee. This letter was discovered in Ron Delight's apartment. And Mr. Delight did show up at the designated place in time. The fact that there is no addressee is irrelevant. I wonder... What's up, Nick? I just had a thought. Yes, only the one. What if the blackmail letter wasn't meant for Mr. Delight? Whoa! Do you have any sort of evidence? For some reason, I just can't shake the feeling. That there's something not quite right about this blackmail letter. Well, everyone, are you quite satisfied? Lord Harbor to grudge against the blight for his betrayal. What do you mean by that? Oh my, I was certain you were already aware. Zvari. Recall back to the testimony I was not here for. Give me security, I lost security since I was team chief. I stole data from the company. And Boulard had yet to forgive young Mr. Delight, uh, which is why he sent him the letter upon mistakenly believing he was a thief. Here is a file we discovered in Mr. Boulard's office. Evidence that Mr. Boulard was receiving money through blackmail. Mm. However, isn't this a bit odd? Why did the defendant pay Mr. Boulard the money, even though he wasn't actually mask to mask? On that point, there was an unfortunate bit of chance. Uh, Right, it's a stake. Uh, it's excusable. Uh, defend truly believed he was mask to mask. Um, do you really think that story is going to hold up? That assertion is not merely my own, I'm afraid. What do you mean? I have here a memo from Ron Delight's wife, Desiree Delight. Damn it, Desi! Oh, God. <clears throat> Ronnie thinks he's mask to mask. Don't you feel sorry for him. Please don't think too badly of him. Argument could be made the robot man would be able to mimic voices perfectly. Well, Mr. Trite. Ugh. Was he trying to act like Mr. Light just now? Okay, so no, he can't. I thought he was actually pretty convincing. Uh, well, at least... Hey, you know what? Confirming what we all already knew. Godot, huge theater kid. Now that's just your imagination talking. Come now, Sir Lawyer. I'm afraid imagination isn't the right word for it. This is a deduction as a result of carefully applied reasoning. Can we hear the carefully applied reasoning ourselves? It's a long story and better saved for another time. Hmm, very well, another time. The so-called long stories aren't usually all that long. At least not in my experience. He's gonna try and connect Detective at me to Boulard. Yeah, right, we know. 
Yeah, yeah, it's the blackmail letter. I know, I know. Uh, one sent to Toronto delight. Okay. Uh, I'll take that red diamond you received the other day instead. Yeah. Objection. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective Acme? Well, if it's just a few, I guess it's all right. The when you said that this letter was addressed to Ron Delight, I couldn't help but notice one major contradiction. C contradiction I don't know where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying things like that. You're one to talk! <laughs> At times like this, men are made to express themselves with their fists. You want to fight me? Why don't you show us what you've got there, Jew? Indeed, time to man up, Mr. Wright. Judge rips off the cloak and it's or the, the robes and he's just super jacked. Looking like fucking Master Roshi from Dragon Ball. Show us the contradiction, uh, contradicting evidence in the contents of the blackmail letter. Uh... Um... The... The... It's the... It's his red gem? How do I present... Okay, I have basically no safety net here. Uh... Blackmail letter updated. Present blackmail letter. Present the newspaper clipping. No, I'm just gonna use a guide. Fuck that. Like, what? Why would you have me... Take a good look at this newspaper clipping. It contains a picture of the Tear of Eminon, the stolen jewel. What about it? The problem is the jewel's color. Color. I'm not much for discussing color myself. Yo, same. According to the clipping, the color of the stolen jewel was blue. However, in the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel was mentioned. Oh, that's... Why would that be the angle to approach from? Hey, everyone, remember the fucking red ring he wears on his finger and brags about having gotten as a gift from a museum? Yeah, what do you think this letter could possibly be referring to? That's the angle of attack, Phoenix. Not, look at this completely separate, unrelated jewel that has nothing to do with what I'm about to talk about. Now remember what the letter says. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day. Red? Which means the red diamond described in the blackmail letter is not the tier of Eminon the Mass Mass stole at all. And your point is, Mr. Trite. So are you trying to say the blackmail letter was intended for someone else? Is that what you're trying to say, right, Trite? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, that was what you're trying to say, right, Nick? Yes! That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> this is who came below. I was actually back playing. Naturally, it was you, Detective at me. Do you have some sort of basis for that claim? You've been personally involved in every single one of Master Mask's cases. And in the last case, you recovered what was stolen and received a jewel. As your reward. A jewel. Probably the one wrapped conspicuously around your incorrect finger. That red diamond ring! They were on your middle finger because you have absolutely no class or style. I mean, just look at your fucking hair. Ugh. That is the diamond referred to in the letter. Which means that Kane Boulard wrote the letter in order to blackmail you. Ah! Order! Order in the court! The order, I say! Objection. It seems you've gone too far with your childish pranks, Mr. Trite. Uh-oh. I don't like the way he said that. Kane Boulard blackmailing Luke at me. Are you for real? Yes, I am. Nick, come on, stand up to him! Then answer me this. The blackmail letter contained the following passage if you don't want your identity revealed to the world. Yes, it certainly does. K. 
Kane Bular threatened to make Lucatney's identity public knowledge. An identity he wanted to keep secret. So just what was the identity? Atme killed Cain Bullard because he was afraid of his secret becoming known. What was the identity he wanted to keep secret? This is what it all comes down to, Nick. The identity of Luke Atme wanted so desperate to keep secret was identity as... An ace detective, Master Mask, or a blackmailer. I'm just going to save real quick. Don't mind me. If I had meter, I'd pick, you know, some of the sillier ones, like ace detective. But I think blackmailer, right? Luke Atme. Was a blackmailer! Objection. Hey now, isn't that a little different from what you've been saying? You said that Kane Boulard was the one blackmailing at me. Are you saying at me was blackmailing me, blackmailing someone else on top of that? Uh, you have to admit that does sound a little odd. It's not odd. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Kane Boulard was blackmailing <laughs> Rondo, I was also being blackmailed by a certain someone. So did you, did you start receiving blackmail letters after the incident? Yes, just a few days after the Tier of Eminon heist. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. I received plans from some very kind people. Incredibly detailed plans. Detailed plans? In which case, that would mean Rondo Light was actually masked to mask. That is what we are claiming! Someone else came up with the plans and had Mr. Delight steal his targets for him. And that someone was none other than Luke at me. Silence! <laughs> now I see it's all becoming clear. What is? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Careless, with a tendency to jump to conclusions. Am I wrong? How did you? <laughs> God damn it. You say that I, look at me, was blackmailing Ron Delight. In which case, I would naturally have known all about his relationship with Mask the Mask. Well, yes. Ron started receiving plans from his second crime onward, correct? Which means I learned of his identity when he committed the first crime. Good point. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. In that case, let's see some hot, bitter evidence. During the first crime, how did Luke Atme know that Ron Delight was masked to mask? Is it the newspaper article? Uh, yes, yes it is. I figured it was, but one must double check such things. Because Phoenix Wright is such a cruel mistress. I think I see it. See what? The... When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Gets into lots of mischief, trying to be the center of attention. What do you mean? This newspaper clipping. It has a picture of you and Ron Delight in his guard uniform. It seems that Master Mask didn't just disappear into the air. He took off his outfit and hid it in a bucket. That, that sounds far too stupid to be true. Correct. With tricks like that, he couldn't fool a baby, let alone an ace detective. And that's when you figured it out, Mr. Admi. That's when you learned that under the mask, mask to mask was really Ron Delight. Uh, what the, wasn't he supposed to be mask to mask? Not only that, it looks like he wasn't even an ace detective. I can't believe it, he was a slime of blackmailer. What a fraud, trying to pass himself off as an ace detective. This is a loud courtroom. Why you, how dare you expose me like that? Why I, I mean, I've never blackmailed anyone in my life. I'm famous and proud ace detective and also mask the mask. Why can't you understand that? I'm afraid you're neither a proud thief nor an ace detective. You're a blackmailer and a murderer. That is your true identity! Why, you... I don't even imply one smart as a cloud if you're a little bit of a big mouth of yours or whatever. Fools, fools, I say. None of you can compare my genius or just tell us so good. So go on, discriminate against me, the ace detective, and I held back my words, I'll get away with it all. <laughs> it's enough to make one laugh.
pulled an old bag on us. It would seem we finally arrived at the real answer. That was quite a performance by Mr. Atme. Bailiff, please prepare a cell for Mr. Atme. Objection. Oh, for God's sakes, Godot. They gotta be like your 12th cup. He was, he was on 12 earlier. Gotta be your 21st cup. The hammer that strikes too fast has no time to aim. Shut the fuck up! Allow me to say one thing. I will be the one to judge. No, you won't. We literally have a judge, for better or worse. You don't get much more in your face than that. It appears your claws weren't quite sharp enough, Mr. Trite. This case has the most testimony from true culprit across all Ace Attorney cases. That doesn't surprise me, given there's an entire trial before this one featuring his testimony. Well, what are you? It's true that you proved a lot of things. Things like Luke Atme was a filthy blackmailer, and that he wasn't at Lordly Taylor the night of the murder. That's right! That's why he's the one who killed Mr. Bookbot. There's still one thing you have yet to prove. What's that? Just because he wasn't at the warehouse doesn't mean he was at the murder scene. Fuck you! Therefore, if you can't prove the pitiful excuse for a man was at KB security, then I don't see how a verdict can be delivered. If you include the investigation, it's in tied uh, with investigation 1-1. Uh, oh, that would be Jacques. Order, order in the court! Well, Mr. Wright, I wasn't aware Jacques had that many fucking uh, cross-examinations. Or testimonies, I guess. This is it. This is the final round. I've got to prove that Mr. Atney was at Boulard's office that night. But can you really prove that? That's long enough. Mr. Trite, I want to hear your answer. That night, Luke at me was at KB security in the fence. Can't prove it. I can't prove it. Just as I thought. But if you hear more of at me's testimony. Objection. Unfortunately, that's as far as you go, Mr. Trite. What do you mean? I won't allow for any more testimony. That's what I mean. Boy, you talk a big game about man and honor and doing the right thing and fighting with your fists, and then when you're backed into a corner, you're like, oh, actually, I'm just not going to allow any more testimony if that's cool with everyone. Thank you. I'd like my W now, please. I've lost every case I've tried, so I'd like to, you know, have a 50-50 at this point. What? Have you forgotten? Luke Atme is here after we interrupted his own trial, and you have failed to prove that he committed the murder. Well, if he wasn't at Lordly Taylor, that, well, I guess we did establish he stole it earlier. I think it's time for this witness to return to his own trial and face his guilty verdict as mask to mask. No. Well, now, Sir Lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the ace detective as well as a mask to mask. My verdict will verify that. Just as Ron Delatz will verify that he is the true murderer. Declare that with the full force of my ace detective niece. Order, order! That's enough deliberation over this witness. I can't believe this. This rate Ron is. Don't give up now, Nick. We still have tomorrow. We can look for more evidence and... By then, it'll be too late. Huh? But why? Double jeopardy. One of the basic rules of any court double jeopardy. Should a defendant be tried and found innocent in court, the defendant cannot be tried again for the same crime. This is a fundamental rule of all courts. True. And it applies to the witness as much as it applies to anyone else. Mr. Abney will be found guilty in a matter of minutes. Guilty as a masked mask, which means he will be innocent as far as the murder of Cain Boulard is concerned. No way! 
fact that you were unable to prove Mr. Atme's guilt of the crime here means your soul is doomed, Mr. Wright. Means that he will never again be tried as Cain Boulard's murderer. Double jeopardy. Points are doubled. Oh my god. Whoa! Now there's nothing I can possibly do to win, even if Ron is proclaimed to be innocent. The real killer, Luke Acme, will go free. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. And as long as there is no more testimony, I'm afraid I have to declare there will be no further questioning of this witness. Are there any objections? Yes! Me! I object! Damn you! Look at his nose! You know he did it! The nose knows! I hereby end the cross-examination of Luke Atme. <gasps> Mia! I think I say it. Your Honor, when you were a child, this was on your report card every year. Has poor hearing and often makes mistakes as a result. How did you know? Phanax, raise your head up high. Have you forgotten what I used to tell you? A liar is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. That voice? No way. Mia! You turned into Scooby-Doo there for a second. Long time now safe, Phanax. Mia? This is the true power of the Curian channeling technique. I know, it, it's really Maya who's standing before me. It is not. You cannot look at that figure and tell me that is Maya. But right now, she's my mentor, Mia Faye. Now, let's do this. But there's nothing more we can do, Mia. Without any more testimony, I can't cross-examine. Not yet. The testimony's not over yet. What do you mean? Your Honor, just now you said something very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> God almighty. Uh, <laughs> you have cross-examined. You have crawled. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, you have crawled. Oh fuck me! <laughs> bail, bail. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. Yes, that's true. But unfortunately, Your Honor, you're forgetting something. Earlier, after the last cross-examination, this witness made a number of remarks. Flashback to like thirty seconds ago. Yes, but these comments appear to have no importance whatsoever. Very well. Then we shall prove their importance via cross-examination. At any rate, as long as the witness has made these remarks, we, the defense, assert our right to question them. Is that all right with you, prosecutor? Is, is something the matter, Mr. Godot? Ah, nothing. <clears throat> nothing. Oh, so lawyer, it looks like you're one step too late. Uh, if you think such falsehoods will do anything to me, look at... Let's hear it. Eh. It's true the witness made some remarks. So then, let's hear this last bit of... Can I help you? My cat's got the zoomies. Let's hear this last bit of cross-examination. Mr. Godot, uh, what are you? Very well then, Mr. Look at me. I'm going to allow the defense to cross-examine your earlier remarks. I hope you prepared yourself, because I sense you're going to be doomed. Zoom, indeed. The defense would like to hear why you declared the defendant to be the true murderer. So please, give us one last bit of testimony. I... Err... Phoenix, this is it. This is our absolute last chance. Yes, Chief. Indeed, it is true I was not at the Lordly Taylor. I had to leave to see to another vitally important job request. <laughs> Never mind. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph ready. My brilliant deduction was what informed me is that the true culprit was Ron Delight. And thanks to the keycard and wallet, it was abundantly clear that he was there. 
I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer, which only sounded once. The butter did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? The victim would have left the prints if he sounded it, which meant the killer sounded it. Mr. Lad was wearing his mask, the mask outfit, which is why he left no prints. And the blackmail letter. The victim likely mistook the color of the jewel. Zvari! Therefore, all the evidence points to that poor boy. This testimony seems to actually hold up pretty well. The witnesses' earlier marks do not appear to have been hastily prepared. All of his points have been explained, and none of them seem to contradict anything. But of course. But how did you know about the emergency buzzer? The police investigation documents went directly through me. And I always look over all the documents. It is elementary, sir lawyer. The judge asked, not me. Are you going to make even more trouble for us now, sir lawyer? I will not allow any more of your usual shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Judge! Come on, it's me, Phoenix Wright, the shenanigan guy. Yes, your honor. We cannot postpone Luke Agni's trial any longer. This is your last chance. Hang on a sec, just one chance? Ha, huh. it seems the party's about to begin. Well, Phoenix, there isn't any evidence to contradict with their testimony. So it would seem. What do you mean, so it would seem? Listen, Phoenix, pointing out contradictions doesn't always mean you have to present evidence, does it? And anyway, this is our last chance. If you can't point out a case-breaking contradiction, you lose. That's all there is to it. Cup number 17, the last cup. It seems like the time has come to put an end to this trial. I have to find a fatal contradiction in his testimony. And I need to point it out without presenting evidence. Which means all I can do is find the contradiction in remarks by pressing it. Remember, you only get one chance. Well, it's a good thing I have a guide up then. I don't know if it'll uh, yell at me for pressing anything that's irrelevant, but uh, I mean, my bar is up there, so I think it will actually. Uh, I need to press uh, left no prints. He was wearing the mask to mask outfit, which is why he would have left no prints. There we go. Uh, press. Mr. Atme, about this last remark. Objection. You still don't get it, do you, Trite? This isn't time to be pressing the witness on every little statement. I'm afraid you're the one who still doesn't get it, Mr. Godot. What? Mr. Atme, it seems you have finally admitted that you were in the CEO's office on the night of the murder. How can you say that? Uh, let's review your testimony, shall we, Mr. Abney? The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Uh, why? Mr. Delat was wearing his mask the mask outfit. Is that correct? Indeed, that is what I said. My deductions are absolutely foolproof. More like your deductions prove you're a fool. Oh shit, got him. I, I'm sorry, whatever do you mean? For some reason, I'm starting to get really thirsty. <laughs> when exactly did we learn the fact that Rondelite was dressed as mask to mask when he went to the scene of the crime? That was, um, it was just a few hours ago, back when my six cup was looking at me with a cold stare. Flashback. That's right. The defendant had yet to tell anyone this fact before this morning. Therefore, the only people who should have known that were those who have been watching this trial. Uh, do you understand now, Detective Atme? There's no way you should have known about that! I... You were in the next courtroom being tried as mask to mask. So then enlighten us. Just how did you know about this piece of information? And well. Objection. Come on, this detective must have known about it. He probably had plenty of chances to find out beforehand. Objection. And it's those chances that I want to discuss next. That night, Mr. Delight, 
That night, Mr. Delight was wearing his mask to mask outfit. There is one and only one way for Detective Abby to have found that out. Only one? One way, you say? Please recall, if you will, Mr. Delight's testimony. Flashback. For a second, my client witnessed the real killer. Objection. But Mr. Delight never saw his attacker, so there's no way to tell whether or not the real killer was Luke Atney. Objection. It's with that statement that I'll turn this case on its head. J just what are you implying? Mr. Delight... Uh, uh, that was what Godot said. <clears throat> Mr. Delight saw the real killer. Correct. Now, if you turn that statement around, it stands to reason the real killer had also seen Ron Delight. Impossible. And a terrible impersonation of me. Oh my god, it's Larry But Oh! It was Luke Atney, guys. Guys, it was Luke at me. That silhouette the whole time. It was Luke at me. Detective at me. You saw Master Mask at the murder scene that night. You saw him when you killed Kane Boulard and assaulted Ron Delight. That was the only way you could have known what Ron was wearing. And now there's an earthquake, it would seem. Oh, God. He's charging up. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. That's the same line you gave yesterday. But I think there's a little more meaning behind it this time. <laughs> Even in the wide shot, she is looking good. What an awfully complicated incident. Aim Boulard was blackmailing Luke Atme, who in turn was blackmailing Ron Delight. And upon killing his blackmailer, Luke Atme tried to frame Ron Delight. He then claimed to be guilty as mask to mask in order to escape his true crime. And to that end, he came up with this plan. To use the double jeopardy rule when making his alibi. Um... At any rate, it would seem we finally found the truth. Excuse me. I came perilously close to searching the record of an innocent young man, besmirching him with the title of murderer. Don't ignore me. Oh, I didn't realize you were there. Why wouldn't he be? Um, about the verdict. I know. You never committed any murder. That's right. I'm so glad you understand that, but... I, um, I really am mask to mask. Huh? Still wonder how the sword got bent. Yeah, that's a good point. How did that sword get bent? Because... I, it, it would have... I guess it was part of his initial alibi. Luke went down to the basement, took the sword, hit it against a wall, and said, I'll oh, say mask attacked me, and then hucked it to the side. So thanks to the trial yesterday, I'm innocent now, right? Oh, he did that as an alibi to explain where he was while Mask was robbing the place, right? Like, they're like, Mask robbed the place, why didn't you stop him? Well, he knocked me out with this sword. See, it's all bent. I think that's what Luke Atme was doing. They don't go over that specifically, but I'm pretty sure that's what he was doing. Uh, what was it you said? Double Jeopardy? Now that you mention it, I've been careless. Careless! Um, what do you think, Mia? As the defendant said, the rule of double jeopardy is absolute. A defendant can never be tried for twice for a crime in which he was once found innocent. Then, Mask to Mask is really innocent? It would seem so. For now. For now? Yeah, that makes sense. Now then, this court finds the defendant not guilty. Yay! God, the only thing that can distract me from Mia's chest. Ron's hips. Man, oh man. Boy, this is really lucky. Wait, er, I... This isn't so good after all. You see, the thing is, I still am mask to mask after all. October 14th, 3.35pm. 
Gah! You did it, Phoenix. Thanks, Mia. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because Maya doesn't call on me much these days. Oh? I'm just joking, Phoenix. Don't take everything so seriously. But on the other hand, Maya, she's some kind of taunt these days. You mean about becoming the master of the Curie Channeling School? Becoming the master means saying goodbye to our mother. Misty Faye, right? Watch over her, will you, Phoenix? Of course. Well then, see you around. Do you want to say hi to Pearl or... Nope, okay, bye, I guess. Mia. Ah! M Mr. Wright. Um, I, uh... I don't know what to say. Congratulations, Mr. Dwight. Dwight. Delight. Thank you so much. Wait, no. Nothing really matters anymore, though, now, because this happened. Come on, just be happy already. Maya! You've been cleared of the murder charges and got off as mask to mask to boot. But in exchange, I lost everything. Huh? What do you mean? Stealing security information from KB Security, becoming mask to mask. I did it all for one reason, for her. You mean your wife, Desiree? She hates criminals more than anything. Come to think of it, she was once held hostage by some robbers, wasn't she? She always said how she hated sneaky criminals. I knew that. I knew that, but... Once I got fired from KB Security and lost all that money I had, she wouldn't have had any reason to stay with me. I thought she would leave me for sure, because, I mean, fucking look at me. And look at her! So that's why you became Mask to Mask. Yes, but it's all over now. A broken bowl can never be put back together! That's not true, right, Nick? Right. Really? Can we all go back to the way things were? You'll be fine, and Nick can prove it. I can. I kind of wish you would check with me first. Mr. Delight, even if a bowl is broken, there's always a way to put it back together. Uh, just take a look at... My badge! Thank you, Mr. Wright, for trying to cheer me up. You don't have to put on a brave face just for me. Huh? I think I'm going to go off by myself and think things over for a while. Wait, Mr. Delight. Farewell, Mr. Wright. Huh. He's gone. I guess I didn't do much to make him feel any better. It was my badge. It was good. What do you mean? I love that badge. Hey, Nicky boy. Miss Delight? Mrs. Delight. I haven't seen Ronnie. Do you know where he is? Well... And here I was all ready to throw him a great big not guilty party. Nicky boy! Yes? Japanese have an art style type of thing where they fix broken things with gold, make them prettier, if anything. Oh yeah, I've heard about that, actually. I'm really glad I asked you to defend my Ronnie. Thank you so much. I'll never forget what you've done for us. Oh, well, um, take care of yourself. You too, Nicky boy. Gil, I can feel my face going red. Ah, there she is. <clears throat> Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya, congratulations! <sighs> Talk about bad timing. Mr. Nick, how could you? With another man's wife in front of Mystic Maya. No, you got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you. Never. She falcon punches me. Pro confirmed for the next Marvel vs. Capcom. So just as the case came to a close, so too did my consciousness. Ron said a broken bowl can never be put back together, but I know that's not true. I mean, just look. Oh, that's what I was supposed to show. It makes sense now. I thought it was my badge. Here's a perfect example of one that was put back together even better than before. God, that was only episode two. Ugh. Me I am mentally exhausted from that. What the fuck? Rare achievement. Play the game! That's a story achievement. You bastards. Ay, 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 ay. Well, Maya got a job as a waitress. And there I am at dinner, I guess, with some dude in a hat and a Dragon Ball scouter. Yay. Pearl's really strong and Phoenix is weak. Pearl's punch or slap knocked him out. Pearl's is ridiculously strong, let's be fair. Didn't she, like, run from the Curane village to 
California City where the courtroom was in one of the games. Bitch, like, instead of taking your train, she fucking ran across the countryside. Girl is strong. Okay, that's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. This case is extremely clear. I see no reason for misinterpretation of the facts. It wasn't me, I swear it wasn't me. The evidence and testimony we have seen and heard are conclusive. The victim was alone at the table when he drank from the poison cup of coffee. No, you're wrong. I know what I saw. I saw. I saw. I saw someone else there. A man. He's the real killer. This fucking trial. Oh, it's a good one, is it? I mean, it sure seems like this other guy was the killer. Why won't anyone believe me? Oh, I should pull up the achievement specific for this case. Looking at uh, the guide. Well, I'd say this pretty much wraps up the case, wouldn't you? Mr. Right. What? No, I lost a pain. His court finds the defendant guilty. Fiddled sticks. This court is adjourned. I can't lose to pain. He sucks. Damn it. I blame you, Charlie. January 6th. Oh, no. I guess we know where Phoenix was. Uh, what is the one for this case? Uh, uh, oh, there's two. I need to get offered uh, donuts by Viola and uh, learn all of Armstrong's fancy foreign words. Great. Might pop uh, that one open because that one seems like it's going to be a whole ass thing. Oh, it's a whole ass thing. Part one, investigation, and part three, investigation. Uh, Wait, what? Uh, I'll be penalized for wrong answers. After doing the above, present to every available evidence and profile to Jean before progressing the story. Make a save after this and do not overwrite it. What do I have to do? It's a whole asshole of a thing. This is a rather tedious achievement because it's very easy to miss. The requirements are as follows. Part one, investigation, breaking a psych block. Uh, the answers are... Bu -bidi -bu -bidi -bu -bidi -bu -bidi -bu. Instead of going straight for the above, deliberately present wrong evidence. Any will do before each step. Oh, so for all four locks? Each wrong answer unlocks a new foreign word. You'll be penalized for the wrong answers. After doing the above, present every available evidence profile to Jean before progressing the story. Every single evidence and profile. Make a save after this and do not override it. Fuck me. <sighs> the Armstrong achievement's paying the ass to get. Yeah, it's looking like it, because then the next step after that is part three. During the investigation, meet Jean in the kitchen. Uh, you'll get these in conversation. Uh... After doing the above, you must present every available evidence and profile to Jean before progressing the story. Make a new save and do not overwrite it. Then during the trial, uh, I have to cross-examine, uh, present every statement, or press every statement that Jean makes before presenting contradictions to progress the story. You got the achievement uh, during the in the restaurant cross-examination. Good lord. This is a whole gun buggery of a thing. But it doesn't even matter until I actually meet Gene Armstrong. Ah, uh, the start of a new year always makes me feel like I can take over the whole world. Yeah, maybe don't say that on January 6th. How about that, Maya? How about you don't say that on January 6th? I bet it does, Maya. So I've decided our resolution should be... Zvari, take on... What do you think? Sure, whatever, Maya. But I think maybe you've had more than enough mistletoe cake. Never! You've got to eat a lot of cake during New Year's. It's practically a tradition. Like watching fireworks on TV or playing a board game. Hey, pal! Uh, hey, Gumshoe, what's up? Detective Gumshoe. Happy New Year, Detective! Uh, likewise. Now listen up, White! I wanna... 
Here's to another fruitful year of lawyer police cooperation. Uh, yeah, me too. All right, pal, you've got some explaining to... Have you got a holiday present for me, detective? A what? Well, I, uh, here, it's really nothing much, but... Yay, thanks. Look, pal, we need to have a talk. Take a seat. Hey, what about Pearly? You haven't forgotten about her present, have you? Uh, no, I mean, yes, I mean... Are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> uh, guess I'm busted. How'd you like my first practical joke of the year? Very funny, pal. I like this case, not just because Armstrong achievement, this case is a pain in the ass. Well, I guess we'll see, won't we? Now, let's see how funny you think it is when I show you this. What is it? A magazine? Hey, I want to see. Deadly poisoning brings guilty verdict. Defense attorney Wright trounced? Trounced? Let me see that. The defense attorney gave an almost childishly amateur performance yesterday. What the heck is this? It's a report, pal, about you. Listen to this. Mr. Wright must take full responsibility for the ruling in this case. Well, and don't tell me you don't remember anything about it. But I don't remember anything about it. When was this issue from, anyway? Uh, December of last year, which I guess makes it last month. Which makes it old news, you mean. But I wasn't involved in a poisoning case in December. Hmm, so what do you think this is all about, Nick? If it wasn't you, pal, then that leaves only one possibility. No way. You don't mean... A f... A phony, Nick. This must be Gumshoe's idea of a joke. I guess he's starting to take this year... I guess he's starting to take off the year with this one, too. A phone, Nick. Oh, my God. I do a bed see you Thursday. Indeed, you will. Says I was trounced and my client was guilty. So what are you going to do about it, pal? Does it say any more than that? or No, nah, it doesn't. Okay. What do you mean, what am I going to do about it? Well, it's your fault the judge found the defendant guilty in this case. My fault? How do you figure that? Because the Phoenix Wright is super famous now. Well, maybe only sort of. Yeah, see what happens when you hotshots start getting too full yourselves. But I didn't do anything wrong. At least, not that I can remember. You better make this white, pal, now. And that means taking the case back to court. Got it? Sounds like you got the first case of the new year. Let's tackle it with gusto. I don't know. The judge already issued a guilty verdict once in this case. It's not going to be easy to get it overturned. I guess that New Year's resolution is going to have to wait until next year. So you're taking the case, White? Good. I'm going to head over to the courthouse then. After that, I'll go back to the precinct. Go up by if you need something. Okay, pal? I guess people started to know the name Phoenix Wright. If a client entrusted a case to me based on my reputation, I guess I am kind of responsible. But why would someone want to impersonate me? What sort of guy would do that? And who is that masked man? Yo, what the fuck? So, what's our first move? I guess we go down to the detention center and talk. Wait a sec, Nick. The person behind bars is because of you. Whoever it is isn't going to be jumping at the chance to meet you, right? Hey, hey! Let's get one thing straight. It wasn't me that... It was the fake that did this. I wonder if he looks exactly like you. You're phony. Zin... Eop, which is Phoenix backwards and some odd spacing. I mean, I hope not, Shudder. And what kind of name for an evil double is Zin Eop anyway? Ah, Nick, I've got it. If you're going to ask whether I've got a twin brother, the answer is no. Spoil sport. I'm sorry, I'll go back and have my parents bang harder for a twin, I guess. How is that my fault, Spoil sport? I wasn't involved in any poisoning cases in December. Has been involved in poisoning at this point. Uh, was the movie studio poisoning? They ate the T-bone steaks. Was that poison? That's the only thing I can think of. Did you notice Gumshoe was acting weirder than usual? Or was it just me? What do you mean? died on the spike fence. Oh, yeah. Will was drugged, but the other guy was stabbed. Yeah, that's right. Drugs were involved, but not poison. I mean, he was really worked up. My guy just found out he's gonna be a dad or something. Yeah, I guess he was acting kind of strange. Maybe he realized he's got strong feelings for you, Nick. 
Ah, the old Gumshoe Phoenix shipping dynamic, which I'm sure has a name like Gumnix or Fishu. Considering how we interact, I seriously doubt that, Maya. Dicknix. It's definitely Dicknix. Uh, well, he, if he wasn't nervous because of you, then maybe it's because of our new guilty client? I guess. All right. Criminal Affairs Department and Detention Center. There we go. This is so nerve-wracking. We need to meet our new client. I wonder what kind of person you tricked and got found guilty. I didn't trick anyone! Keep it down, Maya. That kind of talk could ruin me. Ah! Oh, God. Maggie. Oh. Poor Maggie. How could you, Mr. Wright? How could you do this to me? They put me in solitary. I haven't been able to stop. They haven't let you change either, I notice. What the hell are you wearing? Uh, aren't you... Yes, I am. I'm totally, utterly let down. Ah, you, you, and you're... Oh, yeah, Maya wasn't there for that trial, was she? That was, uh, the first trial of case two. Don't pretend you don't know me. It's me, Maggie, remember? Maggie Bird. Maggie Bird. Ah! The unluckiest girl in the world. Honestly, she and Larry would make a pair. Uh, if the trial was a month ago, why is she still in that outfit? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think the first Ace Attorney in the game, a turnabout goodbye, poisoning was involved. Turnabout goodbye in the first Ace Attorney. Fuck if I can remember which one that is. I know them by who the guilty person was and who the victim was, not by turnabout the name. Maggie Bird. Well, the first case was a clock. The second one was the clock again. The third one, Will was drugged and the other guy fell on the fence, like Nathan said. And the last one was DL6, which involved uh, a lot of people getting shot. Not so much poisoning. Maya was there for 2-1. Was she? Well, with Man for Rock and Karma, I don't think poisoning was involved. Just a lot of people be getting shot. One guy passed out due to lack of oxygen, but that wasn't really poison. Maggie Bird. She's a policewoman. I defended that one time. She was accused of murdering her lover. He was a cop, too. I forget his name, though. He had the banana baseball glove. That I remember. What are you doing here? Didn't I get you a quick... Oh, sure. Very funny. After that fifth-rate defense job, you come in here and start making jokes? You better hurry up and tell her what happened, Nick. Oh. I see. So that's where we stand right now. I'm sorry you've been caught up in another murder. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. I vaguely remember saying the exact same thing last time. But I don't mind. What's one more disaster in my life? At least now the real Mr. Wright is here with me. And I won't let the world keep me down, sir. So what happened? Well, okay, let's start with Maggie Bird herself. And then what happened? Richard Wellington and the victim was Dustin Prince. Fucking... Uh, Dustin Prince and Richard Wellington, huh? So, <clears throat> so how come you're just like that, Maggie? Last year you looked so sharp in that police uniform. Huh, I was fired after that incident last year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, I don't mind one bit. Why were you fired? You are found not guilty. I enjoyed being on the force. I think it's time for me to move on. So, what do you do now? In the second act of the life of Maggie Bird, I'm playing the role as a waitress. A waitress? Huh. Cute place. Yes, in a French restaurant. It's small, but it's quite fashionable. My charming smile and shapely figure came through for me. In my head, the way she's saying that is my charming smile and shapely figure came through for me. And the owner, Mr. Armstrong, hired me straight away, sir. And then you got into this mess straight away, right? Yeah, you could put it that way. So what happened? Dustin Prince was the victim, yeah, and Richard Wellington was the fucking Richard We- Richard Wellington! <laughs> this whole mess started on the 3rd of last month. December 3rd? I hadn't even had my birthday yet. It happened at Trabian. 
Trey B. Ann? Bone apple teeth? Yes, the restaurant where good service and a friendly smile are always included. Oh. You might be misremembering things. Yeah, I think you may be. Uh, no, Nathan's right. I think the closest we have to a poisoning is, uh, Will Powers getting drugged in the, uh, the movie theater from the first game. There were two men at the table, both drinking coffee. One of them looks like he's got my hair, at least. The suit looks a bit different. And then... One of those men slipped some poison into the victim's cup. The victim took one sip and was gasping for air. I was so shocked, I passed out. Hey, hold on there, Maggie. What? You keep calling the guy the victim. Didn't you know the guy who was killed? Not at all. I'd never seen the guy before. Oh. So she wouldn't even had a motive to kill him then, I guess. And the other man, the killer. You saw him, right? Of course! A good waitress must be attentive to the clientele. So, you saw the killer, but were found guilty of the crime anyway? How come? You tell me, Mr. Wright! I wasn't there! Ah! Guess the answer to my question is my phony. Anyway, she saw the killer. Better see if I can get a description of the guy. So if you saw the murderer, why were you still convicted? Because no one else saw. Saw what? The other man. The one who put the poison in the victim's coffee. Everyone testified that way. Mr. Armstrong, the customer, everyone. The victim was sitting alone at his table the whole time. But how's that possible? I don't know. But nobody, not one person, would believe me, sir. Even Phoenix Wright, my one last hope for a fair trial, failed me. What a pathetic defense! My granny could have done a better job! Look! That wasn't me, okay? And then... They found something a bit incriminating in my apron pocket. What? A small bottle of poison. Yeah, that would be a little bit incriminating. What? Poison? It was in your pocket? Well, I passed out when the victim collapsed. The killer must have slipped the poison into my pocket when I was unconscious. And no one else saw this other guy. No, sir. That's what everyone said. But I don't see how they could have missed him. The other guy. I was the one who took coffee to the two men. Oh? What was your impression of them? Well, when I first saw them, I thought they might be in the music industry. In music? How come? Well, one of them had some sort of earpiece and an emo musician's look about him. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. An earpiece and a sample CD, huh? Did you get a good look at the CD at all? It had a band's name written on it. I think it was MC something. They might have been preparing for their debut, I guess. Well, MC something. I've listened to them. So it was a band CD. Maybe a promo disc. <laughs> maybe it was MC Screwdriver. Get serious, Maya. Would you buy the CD of a group named that? All right, Phoenix, calm down. What was the name again? MC Hacksaw? No, MC... Could it have been Hammer, by chance? Just a thought. And what about the killer? What did he look like? Well, I... I don't really remember. Only that it was a young man, well-built like the victim, really. Okay, well... Uh, as you're no doubt aware, I'm a lawyer. That badge, is it real? Of course it's real. That's what they all say, but I've been duped before. Give it to me for a sec. Ah! Chomp. She, she bit into it. And left a few teeth marks, too. I can see that. I just wish I could remember if that means it's real or fake. Uh, I said it was real. Well then. Criminal Affairs Department. Oh god. Ah, Babes in Uniform Calendar. Yeah, oh god. First of all, our favorite guy over on the left who's, you know, practicing lines for a bunch of shit. Uh, the chief up in the middle there who is always on fucking surfing the web. 
And then those freaks, the Badgers behind him. Good lord. And of course, who could forget babes in uniform on the poster? It's been ages since we came down to the precinct, huh, Nick? Looks like Gumshoe isn't around. Got it so easy, leaving everyone else to do the work. No, he's out there somewhere. My buddy's on the courthouse. He's probably trying to arrange the retrial of this case. Guess that means we should go to the detention center and chat with our killer. I should probably show her the newspaper, huh? After being convicted without a fair trial, I'm not sure killer is the right label. But first, we gotta examine this guy. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Don't die running a red light. Die the old-fashioned way of old age! We have a winner. We have a winner! Inject a bit of humor! That's key! He must be coming up with slogans for the safety campaign. I guess. Love that running gag. And this guy. This must be the chief of detectives. He's glued to his computer screen. What? Mask to mask turned up at the bank? What's he doing? Hands up, you scallywags! You're under arrest! Hey, that's our job! Looks like Ron Delight's opted for a new career. Quit surfing the net, chief! Sorry, I was just, uh... Things feel pretty tense in here. He's looking at the gossip rag. I guess Ron Delight's a vigilante now? Poster of a female police officer. Wait, no. That's the latest issue of Babes in Uniform. My bad. Always gotta check that. And then these freaks. Hey, that's the police mascot, isn't it? It's so cute. That's the Blue Badger. It was my idea. I made it. Now it's a national symbol of the police force. So, what's with the pink one? It's new, right? Also, wasn't it, uh, fucking Gant's idea? She's not an it, Nick. She's a she, right, Chief? Yep. Meet the pink badger. You can tell it's a woman because it's pink. It's not even a joke how often that happens, by the way. Rather, he's robbing banks now? No, he said, um, put your hands up, you're under arrest. And the cops were like, hey, that's our job. I think Damask is stopping vigilantes. Or st he is a vigilante stopping other criminals. So one's called the blue badger and the other's called pink, but they're both called badgers. You got it. They're married. <laughs> Um, Mr. and Mrs. Badger seem cuffed together, Chief. You got it. That's marriage for you. Wow. It's always comforting to know that I can look into Phoenix Wright 3 at stuffed fictional badgers and realize my marriage is stronger than that. Whoa. Mascot that's deeper than the deepest of oceans. All right, well, this place has been fun. Oh, yeah. I need to ask you about this. Hey! This article's about my case. Can you tell me anything about the guy who was pretending to be me? Yes, sir. It was the morning after I'd been arrested. I met you in the visitor's room here. You were wearing one of your super sharp suits. Me? Yes, you, Mr. Wright. Arg. <laughs> hey, Maggie. Was my evil double AM here, too? No, I don't remember a phony you, Maya. Oh, uh, it would have been so cool. Then you really worked up, got really worked up and all passionate. I'm going to get you cleared of this crime, you said. Okay, I get the picture. But you've met me in person before. So how come you didn't realize that guy wasn't the real me? I guess looking back now, it was a little strange. Only a little? Well, okay, so you're a bit taller than normal and you looked a bit shady. And your voice was a bit weird. Oh, and you had this kind of funny accent. And so the guy was nothing like me! But he had your spiky hair and blue suit. Is that all it takes for someone to imitate me? How about everyone else in the courtroom, like the judge and the observers? Didn't they realize he was an imposter? Everyone had the big question marks on their faces. But it seemed no one wanted to say anything, sir. This case just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Mr. Wright, do you think it's possible to get a retrial? Probably. The court ruled an absolute genuine in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. So we should be able to get a retrial. Um, but Mr. Wright, do you think we'll win next time, sir? <gasps> My life has been a full course meal of bad luck, complete with defeat for dessert. Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment. Jesus Christ. Come on, lady. 
I'm hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods. How old are you? 23! Failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. I even landed a phony lawyer when I had the misfortune of being accused of murder. The second time you were accused of murder, to be fair. But I will survive, because Maggie Bird always lives to fight another day. And one day I'll find you. Just you wait and see, sir. I'll find the one single moment of good luck. Erg, Zin Ehop is really going to pay for this. Why are you staring at me like that for? Am I right? Whoever is that thought it was a good idea to use my name and get an innocent girl convicted of murder had better watch out. We'll find him. Don't you worry. We'll get Zinny up for you. Oh, thank you. I'll tell you where Trabian is then. Trey. Ah, right. The restaurant where the murder took place. Yes, sir. When you go, please tell Mr. Armstrong I said hi. Sure, all right. Nick, let's go check out this restaurant and its food. All right. Attracts trouble worse than a black hole attracts everything. It's true. And with her luck, she'd... Oh my god, this place is pink. Jesus. Très bien. <laughs> wow! Look at this place. Look, more like smell. What's with the suffocating scent of flowers in here? Then again, girls like that kind of thing, right? Actually, I'm not all that into it. No one's coming to see us. Maybe there's no one here. Don't be silly, Maya. This is a restaurant, and it's open for business. Hello, anyone here? I don't believe it. There really isn't anyone here. Perfect. Let's get intrusive. If there's no one here, we can take anything we want. Yeah, I suppose we can. Oh, yeah, sure. I thought he would fight her on that. All right. Uh, let's look around this screen first. Look, it's one of those magical boxes that spits out money. Fuck off. You know, you're the only person who would ever describe a cash register in that way. Look at all the little trinkets tucked away in here. I bet Mr. Armstrong collected all these personally. Let's see. A bouquet of flowers, some potpourri, and look, fine bone china cups. I never knew you were so cultured. Come on, Maya. This is common knowledge. Any Joe Schmo knows this much. I get. I mean, I wouldn't be able to identify fine bone china. Just saying. It's the restaurant's entrance or front entrance. There's a sign hanging on the door, written in French. It probably says open or closed. It must be one or the other, but I don't know which it is since I don't know Jacques about French. Phoenix, please, you said that out loud. It's a rack full of fashion magazines, and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something a bit more chic sometime, huh, Maya? Yeah, I guess I could. I'm always in my acolyte clothes, aren't I? It'd be fun to wear normal clothes every now and then. Huh? There's something stuffed behind this rack. Looks like a sports paper to me. Hey, and look at this. Someone scribbled a little doodle on the side page. <laughs> mask to mask down there. <laughs> MC Bomber. And one, two, three, four, five zeros. 100,000 MC Bomber. 100,000? Dollars? Maybe? I wonder what MC Bomber is supposed to be. This paper. It's from December 3rd. The paper's from the day of the poisoning. What? Interesting. A paper from the day of the murder. This has got to be a clue. Let's see if I can find out some more about this paper. Oh, I was hoping I could examine this. All right, slide to the left. Uh, this is the obvious one to investigate, so let's look at everything else first. Oh, nothing there. The table sit nicely. It just needs a customer. What do you think this flower is, Nick? Let's see... Well, it doesn't look like a tulip, and it's not a sunflower, I don't think. Duh, even I could have told you that. Well, those are the only kinds of flowers I know. Dang nabbit, I'm a lawyer, not a botanist. Wow, a beautiful winter wonderland out there. Really? Cool, I love snow. Let me see. Huh? 
It's not white. It's not even snowing. Got you. I was only kidding, Maya. Nick. There are lines that are okay and lines are definitely not okay. All I did was tell an itty bitty white lie about non-existent white snow. Phoenix is in a fucking mood today. What the hell are you doing? He is just pushing all of Maya's buttons. <laughs> this restaurant has partitions uh, that separate the tables. When you're seated at a table, you can only see the tables uh, to your right or left. Interesting. Think about the lights? No. Nothing on the table. Okay. Let's look at the obvious then. This must be the table where the murder occurred. It's still wrapped up. It's been a month. I guess so, with all the police tape around it. And that stain must be from the poisoned coffee. Don't go licking the tablecloth, okay, Maya? What? What has gotten into Phoenix? Hey, Maya, look at this snow. Gotcha. Don't go lick at the tablecloth, Maya. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Come on, Maya. Everyone, even Joe Schmo, knows what fine bone china is. Why would I lick it? I'm not a cat, you know. Then why can I picture you doing just that? Is it Bully Maya Day? I don't know. Phoenix is like... Got something up his butt. Uh, I think it's everything I can examine. Yeah, maybe the welcome mat? Nah. Oh, this, now that the newspaper's gone. They're all in French. I should buy something a bit more chic. Found the, okay, yep. I guess I could ask her about the newspaper now. That's all I can think of at this point. All right, uh, move. Present. Oh, a sports paper. Let's see, let's see. Did Gunston Braun manage to defend the heavyweight title? Sorry, Maggie, this paper's actually a month old. It's from the day of the murder. And Gunston got knocked out yesterday, I'm afraid. <laughs> or Gutson. Oh, no. I found this paper in the magazine rack at Très Bien. Really? That's strange. Très Bien doesn't get newspapers. Mr. Armstrong says he's not really fond of them. Then maybe one of the customers left it behind? Anyway, what I want you to do is take a look at this scribble here. Aha! That's it, sir! MC Bomber! That was the name that was written on the CD. Just as I thought. It's just a new Bomberman game. It was an MC Screwdriver after all. Now! So that $100,000 must be a down payment for the record deal, right? If someone gave me $100,000, I'd sing for sure. The Master of Karain, the Spirit Song, or even Maya's theme. Uh, okay, Maya. So, the sample CD was on the victim's table. That means this newspaper may have belonged to the victim. You're right. So the victim left this behind on the day of the murder, huh? I think you better step up the investigation, don't you, Nick? Actually, I think that's about it for me, since I assume uh, either the, uh, the restaurant or the uh, police center now has new stuff. So I'm going to end it here a little bit early today. Uh, we solved mass to mass problem and we've been introduced to this hot fresh new hell for Maggie Bird. Uh, when we come back Thursday, it's AI the Somnium Files, a game I'm told has voice acting so I can rest the old pipes, at least in terms of doing silly voices. Until then, love you all, be good people. I will see you around and have a great week. Toodle pip.